Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Oh, sorry. Wasn't I supposed to start? But is that okay? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, everybody. Omar, you want to introduce uh, Jose and uh, Rod? Yeah. How, hmm. how do you guys want to be introduced? Uh, I'm a security researcher. That's that's pretty much what I do. Yeah, we're already broadcasting, so go ahead and uh, announce. Oh, okay. So, uh, uh, well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for being here uh, on a Sunday. Uh, I'm here with Jose, and uh, today we're gonna uh, we're gonna speak about the uh, adversarial emulation, adversarial emulation using um, the Splunk attack range as a tool. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about yourself, Jose? Yeah, uh, I'm Jose Hernandez, a uh, uh, colleague here of, Spl uh, of uh, Rod and Splunk, we're both principal researchers, and, and yeah, we're just super excited here to share how uh, we're we're using uh, uh, the attack range, not only to do adversarial emulations, but how you can use it as well. Okay, um, Jose, I think you're set to be able to present if you want to go ahead and present. Can you see uh, my screen? Yeah, we can see your presentation. Um, just so everybody knows, um, all the support for this will be done in the Discord channel. So please join the Discord channel. If you don't know how to join it, it's pretty simple. Go to jungle.io and it's misspelled jungle. Um, it's June, because we're in the month of June, J-U-N-E, and then gle.io. If you go to jungle.io, um, you'll see join Discord servers, click on that, and then uh, join the Texas Cyber Discord channel and hop into um, track one, and uh, we'll have a team there helping answer questions and answers. And uh, Rod and uh, Jose, you guys are in there, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'll be in there as well to help you. So uh, um, I will stop talking and hand it over to you guys. And um, also Omar is in the channel in case uh, you need any other assistance. Hey everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you so, so um so basically what, what we're gonna do today, yeah, I can see I can see the screen, we're ready to go. Um so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about adversarial emulation. Um and we're gonna do a little of a lab that is built on um uh Esplunk, uh attack uh range uh this is a tool that was uh it, it developed by the splunk security research team and it's open source available to everybody and and you can modify it and you can uh use it for all kinds of things uh and you will see that we'll go um in very detail on it uh, next slide please so um this is who we are. I, um, I'm a principal security researcher, <clears throat> uh, engineer. I work with Jose at the Splunk research team. I worked at Prolexic, which is now Akamai. Uh, I used to work at a, a UBA startup called Caspita, which was acquired by Splunk. Um, currently is Splunk, uh, uh, one of the co-founders of Hack Miami, Pacific Hackers. Uh, meetups and conferences, and uh, I created command and control and no core CTF. Uh, Jose, do you want to go ahead and uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm also uh, uh, an old school Splunk uh, Prolexic uh, engineer. Uh, after Prolexic, I ended up actually uh, at Splunk for for a long time, uh, and then decided to co-found my own company called Zanich, which got recently acquired by Oracle. Um, it's now their web application firewall and DDoS uh, cloud service, and and came back to Splunk to focus on producing better detections, and yeah. All right. So next, please. All right. So so what is the Splunk attack range? The Splunk attack range is a framework that allows the security analyst and an operator to quickly um, and repeatedly. Uh, replicate or emulate attacks and generate data as close as what, what is called in machine learning ground truth. Ground truth is basically as close to reality as you can get data. This is a fundamental problem, not only for analysts, but for researchers. We're always, we're always dealing with synthetic data. Synthetic data 
is logs that are produced by grids or things that are too artificial. Usually they do not have any type of noise like you have in a normal or real network, for example, or you have a lot of uh, applications that, that would run into a standard workstation. And we're gonna talk about it um, as we move on. Uh, and we would, we would uh, revise the concept of a golden, what a golden image is, is why it's important when you are um, replicating or emulating adversarial techniques. So, <coughs> sorry, the, the reason this was developed was to try to get as close as possible to ground truth um, and also produce some sort of data that was readable, that was sparse, that was able to be analyzed. And uh, as you will see as well, uh, you'll be able to build upon it responses so it's because uh, we do have a, a plugins for for soar as well so next where can you find it you can find this plug attack range uh in github basically what you do is uh, you clone the repository and all the code will be there uh where uh, we will go in detail how you customize it in order to make it happen but is public and available for everybody. You can, you can do that uh, right now. So um, let's continue, please. So here's a little bit of the, of the uh, architecture. So mainly there, there are two ways to build that, uh, the attack range. You can do Vagrant, and Vagrant will build it locally, or you can do Terraform, which will build it in the cloud. So, if I do Vagrant, and both of them are based on um, uh, architecture and uh, 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 from the orchestration perspective in Ansible, um, they will, you can you can on both modes you can you can have uh, you have a Splunk server, you have a domain controller. <clears throat> You may have a Windows server with a domain controller, and you can have a Windows client, which is a Windows 10 for station. You also get a, uh, a uh, like I said before, a Splunk server, uh, which is based on Ubuntu. And in this Splunk server, you will have um, included an adversarial uh, f uh, emulation framework uh, well known as Caldera, which is developed by MITRE. Uh, we do have plans at one point to do Mac OS, but that's not released yet. On the Terraform part, you, um, you can uh, build as well a Active Directory domain controller, a Windows server, a Windows client, a um, Ubuntu with Caldera and um, uh, Splunk. Oh, and uh, Kali. You can actually have uh, a Kali machine that we'll, we'll be seeing examples of uh, how to use the, the Kali inside the, uh, the internal or the, the network that is created or configured when you build up the attack range. Let's move on. So, so I'm not sure if you want to jump in here, Jose, and explain a little bit about uh, the serverless infrastructure uh, and the Kubernetes part, uh, but this is also a <clears throat> part of what we're, we're developing is eventually we're going to have, uh, and I, I can give a little bit of a hint, uh, we're going to have a, a, a cloud-based um, um, attacks, uh, Splunk attack range, meaning we're not going to have, we're just not going to have what what we have right now, which is heavily based on uh, endpoint and some network, but we're also going to have cloud-based attacks. So we're going to we're we're working on emulating uh, the infrastructure and the environments that are uh, usually found on on the cloud uh, vendors, and eventually we're gonna we're gonna release. We're we're very close to doing a big release of a um, cloud-based attacks attack range that's common and uh, uh, we have a colleague named uh, Patrick Varais who is doing an amazing job 
at developing and leading this effort as well as Jose. So you should expect this in the near future. We're not gonna focus today on the cloud-based attacks, but it's important for you to know that that is coming. Next one. Actually, Ross, before we jump out, I, <laughs> I just wanna make a note. So, so um, maybe something that wasn't necessarily too explicit and just to add a little color. Um, the vagrant mode of the attack range is mainly built for local development. Meanwhile, the Terraform mode, uh, as Rob pointed out, um, it's heavily focused uh, on, I think, like it's, it's a lot of endpoint data that you get out of it. So it's mainly focused for endpoints. Um, uh, this cloud, uh, the cloud attack range, is really built around collecting data um, and, and launching simulations against specifically native cloud services, right? So, so uh, elastic container storage, um, uh, ECS, uh, ECS uh, also the serverless components of that, so like uh, uh, S3, Lambda, any Lambda services. Um, and, and, and to Rod's point, uh, the, the, code, the code is already out there. Um, at clearly straight, we're still testing and we're still building um, attack simulations uh, for these kind of environments, but the code to build the environment is out there. So if you ever wanted to do manual testing, um, you can get started with that tomorrow or today, actually. Cool. <clears throat> so, all right, so here's a little bit of, of, of more architecture. Um, and this can get uh, a little bit extensive, to be honest. I can tell you this as a, as a researcher, as a pen tester, as a, uh, at one point, I was a, a, a heavy IR person when I was at the PLX cert. Um, it's, it's, it's fundamental for anybody to understand uh, adversaries and attacks to have your own lab. You know, they say that in martial arts, you can only fight what you train. So if, you're, if you don't have any, anywhere to replicate you, the attacks, to understand, to see the logs, to see how an attack looks like, um, it's, 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 it's definitely a disadvantage. Uh, it requires, this is an ability that is only acquired by experience, by somebody that has been in the field for many years and, and they, because they've been exposed to this type of technologies and seen the logs and, 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 and tamper with them, they kind of recognize them. But if you are studying, or even if you are good at, at certain platforms, but not good at others, it's still a disadvantage. So the, the block at that range is, in my opinion, is, is, is a, uh, is a, uh, a battlefield enhancer because this will help you prepare. This will help you understand how the logs look like. This will help you replicate a technique and then find it, uh, like we're gonna see in Splunk and see, oh, so this is the event ID I need to look for, or oh, this is the, the process that gets spun, or this is the directory I need to look for if I'm trying to catch something. So in, in, in these environments, like I said before, we have Windows Domain Controller, Windows Server, Windows Workstation, a Kali machine, a Splunk server, and a Phantom server. I had to warn you, if you decide to do this by a vagrant, you better have like all kinds of great hardware with you because it can get very big um, and that may slow your machine. So our suggestion is if you, because many times talking about um, code as infrastructure uh, type of tool, you can destroy and deploy these things. You don't have to keep them open. You'll see that very soon. That, that you, can, you, can, you can enable it, build it, do your thing, destroy it. You don't have to keep this running. On the local part, it might be a little more difficult because you are gonna have to download all these images. You're gonna have to start all this, um, <clears throat> all this uh, operating systems, uh, and it will be there for you. But you know, unless you have like 32 or 64 gigs of RAM and terabytes of hard drive, this can be a problem. Now, this is a good problem to have. Uh, in during my career, there were times that I had to basically request an entire ESX size server. Right, you, you talked about ESX side and uh, and VMware hypervisors now as legacy, right? Where we used to do, to, you had to put a request, you had to really even look at the the rack space and see if they have space for an ESX size server 
So this is, we have come a long way from that. Now, basically you just have a, a, a um, code that you adjust and it builds this up, downloads the ISOs, your deck will be ready, uh, your users and passwords will be already configured and you will be ready to go. The only thing I, I'm going to warn you is that if you're gonna do this locally, you gotta be careful because it's quite a bit of a load for a workstation and unless you have something <clears throat> that is 32 or 64 um, gigs of RAM at least, uh, you're gonna have trouble, it's gonna slow down, but you can do easily a Windows Server, a Kali machine, and the Splunk Server. That, that shouldn't take you that much. Um, not sure if you want to make some comment on on the on the sources the source types that I'm seeing there. I was gonna touch on them. Yeah, yeah. Actually, and if you don't mind, Robert, before we jump into the source types, I just want to make a a, a note that th this is the full uh, acceptable environment. Um, but for example, if you're using Vagrant to 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 Rod's point, you probably don't want to spin all of this up. It's it's gonna make any decent MacBook Pro uh, hot enough to fry an egg. Um, but but you can pick and choose what comes up. And actually, by default, the attack range only brings up uh, the Splunk server and an Active Directory server uh, to attack. So and, and the Splunk server, as Rod's point, point pointed out a little bit earlier, uh, also contains Caldera. So Splunk server has a basically it's, it's going to collect all the events from from Active Directory and also has Caldera for you to attack and Atomic Red Team on the Active Directory for you to be able to attack through it too as well. Um, Kali, uh, Kali, the Windows 10 servers, the, uh, the regular Windows server, and Phantom are all optional instances that you can just flip on if you need to. Right, if it's okay with you, I can dig into the, the data sources that we're seeing here. Yeah, well, if you want, do you, do you want to tell us a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, basically what are we looking for as, as, as far as... Um, Maybe we can, we should start with Windows and then talk a little bit about the future with OX Query. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 um, one of the cool things and one of the reasons, again, we we built the attack engine. We were we were seeing ourselves like building attack environments consistently, and it would take us days. Uh, uh, and we needed usually clean environments to test new attacks on. Right? We didn't want environments that were tainted with previous attacks. We're emulating in it, and and so. In order to do that, we really needed like a really good uh, setup. Specifically, we started with Windows, uh, which is where we do a lot of the analysis on. But uh, oh, looks like uh, uh, we lost your audio. I said I can I can pick up on here. Um, so so what we have on the on the Windows 10 side is a um, a number of, of source types that start from Sysmon, um, Windows event logs, and um, uh, Atomic Red Team results. And uh, all of this is grabbed by the universal forwarder and sent into Splunk. Once this is sent to Splunk, obviously, you had to have, uh, a, depending on the source types, uh, the applicable uh, technology additions that you can download from Splunk Base, um, the common information model application, if applicable, the ESEU, which is the, the Enterprise Security uh, Content Updates, and uh, there's a new, um, there's a new, a um, framework which would allow us to streamline. Uh, new content, new searches uh, via a, a CI CD process. So uh, um, I think Jose's back. Yeah, yeah, sorry about oh, that. Oh, hey, cool. Okay. Yeah, Comcast, Comcast doesn't like me today. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but uh, well, yeah, exactly to the point, I, I'm not sure where I left off, but um, uh, you know, data sources in there are, are Sysmon and, and we use out of the box uh, Swiss on security Sysmon configuration. So it's pretty realistic. Um, uh, uh, on the network side, we use uh, Splunk Streams, which is very, very uh, feature parallel to to Zeek. Actually, one of the one of the one of our bucket list items is to add Zeek or a Zeek server into the attack range. 
Um, and and then we have a bunch of like Rod, I think you mentioned this earlier, we, we have a bunch of other TAs uh, to collect like Windows event logs, Windows application logs. Um, so so we cover the endpoint, specifically endpoint events with Sysmon, right? Like process creation, <clears throat> memory access, we cover uh, operating system, right? So uh, application logs, security logs, et cetera, et cetera. And then also uh, the network stack uh, using uh, using streams. Stream. It and is also, also yeah. It is also important to mention that uh, for the standard baseline uh, and build of this, you don't have to install anything. By the time you spin up the range, all the appropriate TAs and add-ons and applications will be installed. But it's important for you to know that you can always add more or customize it. Uh, Jose, do you want to tell us a little bit about the future work with Mac OS? Because there seems to be a shift, mostly in Silicon Valley, uh, towards what I call the Okta Mac OS type of authentication uh, uh, type of model where companies are walking away from uh, um, Windows-based networks. You there? It looks like he's having trouble again. Okay, so so basically, uh, I can I can add a little bit. The the um, the future work that we're looking at would include OS Query, and it would include OS Query because, uh, as 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 I just said it, uh, there is definitely a shift uh, in many companies, uh, at least that we see in the Silicon Valley, where um, they're using other type of, 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 of domain type of uh, authentication, federation authentication, uh, mostly using things such as Okta, for example, um, or Ping or any other type of product. And the workstations uh, are no longer Windows. Uh, in the last two startups that I've been, which of course are not enterprises, but they, they definitely at one point reach a, a, a in nice size, uh, we only had a Windows computer, or a, it was actually at one point it was a, a virtual machine for the accountant. We didn't even need, we didn't use Windows for anything. So, and this is happening. It's happening, and we know about it. So, we're, we're starting to look at other sources and other types of uh, uh, authentication environments to add them to the range as well. So let's. Uh, yeah, so, sorry yeah. again. I, I think my my internet is suffering. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're working basically. I mean, we're working heavily on trying to get a uh, OS query, uh, basically server instance and agents deployed as part of the attack range, so we can collect specifically like a Mac OS or even Linux um, uh, endpoint logs using this. Uh, and that, that's that's some of the uh, Mac work. Um, there's a big challenge with uh, Mac OS uh, emulation that uh, AWS doesn't today support the ability for you to spin up a Mac OS instance uh, in EC2. So, so one of the things that we've been looking at is how do we how do we do that, right? Like, like in Terraform mode, uh, it mainly is built and centered around running in AWS, and because we cannot emulate a, a Mac OS instance in there, it kind of limits us. Um, so, likely. At the beginning, Mac OS support will be limited to the Vagrant mode uh, and eventually expanded. But we're we're somewhat at the mercy of the cloud provider that we we leverage out of the box here, right? All right, let's move on. All right, so so here's maybe you can chime in here as well because you 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 have a deeper knowledge than me on the on the AWS uh, cost. <laughs> The cost, uh, uh, the cost jungle, to call it a certain way. Yeah. So, so, so um, the attack range instance type. Uh, so, it, it first uh, in Terraform mode, we built it's built for AWS, and the instance type we use is a T two two Excel. Uh, so, uh, that if if you price out the cost of running a T two two Excel instance, and specifically. Um, you know, usually again, we average out. You're you're gonna be you're gonna be running the attack range for about three hours, four hours. Is what we again like the typical workflow. We're like we'll take about three or four hours to develop a detection, then destroy it, rebuild it, um, and a month. And if you do this a few times a month, 
Uh, there's a, a cost estimate calculated down, down there, but it roughly comes out to no more than, uh, uh, I think it was like $200 a month if, if, you build, if you're building a full range consistently, right? Like where you're doing this every day uh, in a daily users where, again, you're building it for three or four hours, destroying it, building three or three, four hours more destroying. Um, and, and this is specific, again, for the Splunk server, a Phantom or Kali, right? So, so usually, well, usually we don't use both typically, but sometimes we do. So uh, I factor it in one or the other. And it went some sort of Windows endpoint, um, Windows client or Windows domain controller. Um, if you just leave those up again, 24/7 running, you're looking at about a $200 cost. Um, again, if, if your workflow is usually built, destroyed, um, you're not. It, it usually that actually drops down a whole lot more since since you're not keeping those instances running. Uh, and and I think it drops down to about like fifteen dollars roughly uh, a month. Again, depending on your usage and how long you keep the instances up. Cool. Let's uh, move on. So here's the a, something that that you you certainly want to look at right now, and and, and I know you're probably having your coffee and and uh, waking up, but this is something that you need to look at right now because when we start doing the exercises, here's where you find the evil. The evil or the data from the attacks will go into the following indexes. The index will be equal win. We're gonna, we're gonna walk you through this, by the way, but uh, you need to understand when you look at the Splunk search, that when you type index equal uh, win or main or attack, <clears throat> here's what the, the logs are gonna go. And in case, and this happens sometimes when you, this is common with a female environment, sometimes there are hiccups, sometimes, you know, you are, for example, pulling an app from a specific website and you get a either a 403 or a 404 and then the environment gets built but the the app is missing so it's important for you to understand to, to the indexes that you're going to be looking at and there should be data in it if there is no data in it we have an issue so if you have for example if you're building for example this out of aws then you simply destroy the environment and redo it again this is this is almost a this is a tip uh, when when operating the range. Many times, because of latency of the internet or what have you, errors in the in the servers, you, there might be hiccups where certain things cannot install. If you don't see them, my suggestion is to destroy it. Remember, this is ephemeral. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, what, you, what will happen is it will take, obviously, it will take you another, uh, it takes us an average of 10 or 15 minutes to build a, a full range from AWS. But um, if you see things like this, uh, like for example, you go index equals win, and for example, you don't see PowerShell logs, uh, if you executed, obviously, a, a, a PowerShell-based attack, or if you look at uh, network logs via Splunk stream, and remember, when you're looking at stream, stream has to be configured to see specific ports. So if you're looking at a, a uh, you're trying to emulate, for example, a, a specific attack that is no, is not under the standard. Uh, you may have to modify a little bit of stream in order to see it. Uh, on the Sysmon logs, we use, uh, I believe, this, uh, a policy for Sysmon, for Sysmon that is uh, the 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 heaviest and the highest on auditing and getting logs from the workstations and servers. And those, all of those go into index equal win. So remember, Windows uh, Workstation, Sysmon logs, PowerShell logs go into the win index. The network logs with Splunk string go into main. And of course, the attack simulation logs from Atomic Regime. Remember, we have two attack um, adversarial simulation frameworks. One of them is Atomic Red Team. And Calera, and we'll go over it in a in, in a few minutes. Next slide, please. So um, again, we are um, at one point, and this is again uh, something that we are developing on. But we want you to understand that we're trying to adapt this framework to uh, obviously what's happening in the in the market, in the industry, and in the field. The, the goal is to get you the closest environment to ground truth. Uh, and that's what will make 
or where it leverage your research and your defense posture. So well, one of the things that, that we're doing is uh, there will be there is there will be a deployment with Kubernetes uh, that can be activated via attackrage.com. Well, I will show you in a minute how we do that. Uh, we will be working with a, an amazing tool developed by by some of the Splunk departments called Splunk Connect for Kubernetes. Basically, this gets absolutely everything inside a cluster if you're auditing it. And we're also working on uh, serverless deployment, uh, basically based on Lambda and REST APIs, uh, using uh, Dynamo DBs uh, and S3 buckets. Uh, but we're not gonna we're not gonna delve into that. Um, uh, but for those who are new into the AWS world, usually the main sources of logs are either CloudWatch or CloudTrail. Um, that I'm sure at one point uh, we will come up with a, a seminar for the cloud-based attacks, but uh, not right now. Next. All right. So what do I do now that I want to build the attack range? The attack range, as I said before, can be found on uh, GitHub. You can basically clone it, like you see in the prerequisite. Uh, attack range is based on Python 3. And if you, you still have an environment of Python 2.7, you may have to use a, a Python module called Virtual EMV and create a Python 3 environment, activate it, and then you can use the, the popular packet uh, install management tool uh, for Python, PIP, and then install the requirements. Once you start the requirements, it will basically have your all the binaries um, and all the libraries that you need. Uh, you will still, if you're in uh, using AWS, you will have to, to initiate Terraform as well. You have to go into the Terraform folder and initiate it. If you're using Vagrant, um, you can do brew and uh, you're gonna need VirtualBox uh as well and again uh when you are looking at the background uh execution of this please make sure you do not um over configure the the range you you do if you put everything in it we're talking several machines it will take quite a bit of time and it will probably slow your computer to a crawl so i would suggest not to if you have, for example, a standard, usually a standard issue MacBook Pro, um, which will, they will give you 16 gigabytes of RAM, probably around 500 gigabytes, up to a terabyte of hard drive, and no more than three machines per, per, per iteration. And then you may have to destroy it, reconfigure it. That's the price of, 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 of you know, limitation in, in, in terms of, of resources. If, you, if you're using a Windows based, um computer you you i would say that the same rule applies uh i'm not sure jose if you want to add on to this yeah i, I mean so so uh, specifically for configuring big uh for configuring the attack range to run in vagrant it's, it's pretty straightforward the, the main requirement here is to have a virtual box and vagrant obviously uh, it's, uh if, again for those of you not familiar with vagrant vagrant is uh it's basically a utility that allows you to manage through a command line interface different virtual box machines and, and they call them boxes. Uh, well, actually, not just virtual box, Vagrant supports also uh, VMware and a few other emulation, local emulation engines, but uh, uh, mainly it was built originally around virtual box. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. It's, you know, clone the project. Uh, we typically, uh, so no, we typically we recommend we, for, for everyone to use virtual environments for Python when installing our requirements. You don't want to taint your system libraries with the, the dependencies that the system, ha the, the attack range has. So, which is the second step in prerequisites, right? You, you install a virtual environment, you activate a Python 3 virtual environment, and then you go ahead and install the requirements. But uh, besides that, it's, again, uh, if you're running, if you're running installation on Mac OS, it's as simple as, a, uh, again, this also some sorry, this, this also assumes you have brew. But as simple as you just do a brew install VirtualBox, uh, brew install Vagrant, and and just editing the 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 comp file. 
Right, and um, also, <clears throat> sorry, one quick comment. Uh, as you move on with uh, with your environment or your lab, um, and I can tell you this from, in, uh, based on my experience, if if you are updating or you're or you're building new machines, it is important that you keep uh, not only Vagrant but VirtualBox up to date. If not, you may have issues. So always remember that. Next. Uh, okay. You want to add something? Uh, on the telephone side, I yeah. So so today later later on after the after the slides and we walk we we went we just walk through. We're we're gonna give you a range in telephone. We should have probably said that at the beginning. I'm sorry, but uh, right. uh the telephone installation instruction is it's a little bit more. Uh, there's a lot more steps than both. Involved, but uh, it's it's somewhat like riding the bike. Once you configure it once, first you never have to configure it again, uh, unless you change accounts. But uh, it, it's pretty straightforward to do afterwards. Um, the the installation instruction here is the prerequisites are the same. You know, clone the project, uh, install virtual amp, and then install the dependencies under that virtual environment. Um, if you're running on Mac OS, uh, Mac OS X, uh, oh, sorry, Mac OS, you do a brew install Terraform to get uh, uh, to get the actual Terraform binary, or you can just literally uh, uh, download it from the term, Terraform site and put it in, in, in local bin. But um, you, you'll, the, the step after this is you basically initialize Terraform. And this, uh, the second step here, uh, run uh, Terraform init, what it does is it, uh, it's gonna go ahead and, and pull out all the plugins that Terraform is gonna use and install it locally. And then, the next step is insta installing the AWS CLI since uh, the Terraform in uh, installation under the hood leverages uh, AWS Bodo uh, for doing a lot of building and, and instantiation. And so you install AWS CLI, then you do AWS configure, you pass along your uh, API keys that you generated in AWS under an, an AMI user. Uh, once you have the AMI user configured and or your AWS configured locally, then you just Key gen, you can uh, you generate a key pair. That key pair, you're going to go ahead and upload on the region that you're going to build on. Uh, you give it whatever name by default. We call we call the key pair in the comp file the attack range uh, key pair because we're not creative with names. <laughs> uh, but but uh, but you can also alternatively also create the key pair in AWS and download it locally as long as again it's it's. Uh, as long as you set the right key pair on the attackrange.com, there's a parameter in there to actually point to what key pair, what private key you're using. And the, again, the, that key needs to exist on, ter, on, on AWS. Uh, and then the last step, or well, the, the, the step before the last year is uh, just accept the terms for using the Ubuntu uh, AMI images for AWS account. Otherwise, when you build, you get some weird error saying, hey, you got to go to the marketplace for AWS to actually use these images. It's it's an AWS thing. Uh, and and that's, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. The final step is, again, just just make sure you change your passwords and, and set any uh, um, allow list under the attackrange.conf. And obviously update whatever if you change your key pair name to something else, make sure it's, it's listed on there and, and configure the environment. But again, there's a whole lot more steps involved, but uh, one, at the end of this, I can walk you through building one from scratch, uh, but we'll also be providing uh, whomever is in the shop, in the workshop here, we'll be providing already pre built ranges so you can see what the configuration looks like, anyways. Um, right. Yes. I'm also going to drop in Discord. Sorry, Rada. Right? I'm also going to drop in Discord. I, I wrote a, a a wiki page yesterday on how to install the, like a, a that has a little script, a little quick Ubuntu script on how to like automatically build the attack engine on Ubuntu 18.04 uh, instance. So if you wanted again to do this right now on your own, uh, in your own AWS instance, there's uh, I'll paste that wiki page in there as well. Here you go, Rod. Oh, yeah. sure. Uh, so Packer is, is another alternative um, that you're going to have to use. Uh, you're going to need the, the the binary and sort of perform a, a similar run on um, installing Packer. And you always need, if, if you're using, when you're interacting with any cloud vendor, most likely you're going to need uh, their SDK or their CLI. So in this case, as you can see, you're going to need the AWS CLI. Um, 
and you're gonna have to configure, like Jose said previously, uh, your uh, SSH keys. I actually uh, took the time to put a screenshot of exactly where you had to configure the SSH keys. We're gonna see that in a minute because that for me at first was one of the challenges because um, you had to provide the um, the right SSH keys that match with the name of the SSH keys that you register in AWS. If you do not do that, you're not gonna be able to communicate with your instances. So um, it's important sometimes uh, because of, of configuration errors, it may look uh, like a network error or it may look like a hiccup, but it's not. It, it means you have not placed the SSH keys, the correct SSH keys within the uh, the code and we'll, we'll go over about it uh, in just a few seconds. Um, you may also want to change the Splunk admin password and win password within uh, attack underscore range dot conf. Uh, if you're building something that you're going to use for 10, 15 minutes, probably you don't have to worry about it. But uh, we have seen cases where unfortunately, you know, with the there are people on the internet looking at this. They and they had put the passwords and access the uh, the instances, and you don't want that. You're gonna get a nasty alert from the AWS security team because uh, most likely what they're gonna try to do is install either a crypto miner or something. Um, but uh, it is important. We're working on creating uh, random random passwords uh, as we build it, but it's something that you want to pay attention to. Uh, next. Yeah, um, actually, Rob, before we leave this one, I want to add a little bit of color about why Packer exists in the attack range. So we, we attack range, we mainly have, uh, again, two modes, which is uh, Vagrant, you build it locally, or Terraform to build it in AWS. The main reason we built Packer um, was to speed up the build time in, in, in AWS or uh, using Terraform. Uh, what pack, the Packer mode does is it's no different than Terraform mode in, in the end result. You get the same exact environment, uh, but the difference is the process, it, it, how it does that. Um, the Terraform mode, it, it spins up all the machines and then it uses Ansible to provision them. Packer mode, what it does is it builds AMIs, uh, provisions the AMIs, and then spins them up. So the AMIs are already pre-built. Why, why do we introduce Packer? Packer makes it really fast to consistently be uh, destroying and creating ranges. Because the first time around you're building an AMI, it takes about the same time as using Terraform mode, but any other subsequent destroy and create, it's about a minute long. Uh, by the way, the tech cringe takes about 15 minutes in total for it to fully come up. Um, and so, and so, and so, Again, we introduced it mainly for 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 that kind of workflow where you're you're continuously you know you test something you you build it up and then you destroy it and then you build it up again and destroy it. One caveat here is if if anything gets changed in, like if you change anything on the configuration file in attackrange.com, then Packer will have to rebuild those AMIs uh, since the environment now has changed uh, essentially. But besides that, this this is why this mode exists. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay, so here's the comment that, that, let me bring back the comment that I was making. What you see here is where you're going to place your creds. This is very, very important. When you clone the repo for the attack range, uh, there's specifically a file which you're going to have to modify to your convenience. You're doing this because you're going to have to tell the attack range, okay, I, maybe I don't need Kali. Maybe I just need this Splunk server that brings Caldero and Atomic Red Team. Uh, obviously, you need a host where you're going to execute this attack. So that will be either a client or either a server. Um, and then uh, in order for you to communicate with those uh, instances, you're going to need your keys the keys where are the keys the keys are registered and you can create it um, there are two ways of doing it a, um, aws can generate them for you or you can ge generate them yourself and uh, upload them to aws so specifically on their uh, range settings there is key underscore name equals 
Um, that's what your public AWS key name, I repeat, name is where it goes. So even though you see the dot pop extension, I named that exactly the same when I registered and uploaded my keys to AWS. So it's important for you to understand that if it doesn't match, it's, you're gonna get errors. It's gonna give you, oh, I couldn't SSH into X host. Um, in, under private underscore key underscore path, you can see where I store my actual um, private key. And I created, that this is something that I do every time I'm working with cloud environments. I have keys for every single cloud environment. I don't, I don't share my keys with different environments and I just do this and usually sometimes I even destroy the keys uh, as I create new environments. So remember, if you look at this, uh, the screenshot on the top right, you will be able to see uh, the structure of the files and directories um, when you clone the repository. And on the left is when you either cat or nano or vim uh, attack underscore range.conf. So remember that. Next up, please. Here, so it is even clearer. Um, there is, like I said before, in order not to confuse, uh, uh, even though it has dot and extension, it is exactly the same name. So I, you had to go into your, um, uh, what I call the GUI, right, the, the console, and then you had to register your key pairs. And your key pairs, I generated my own, I uploaded it and named it, and that's the name that goes into the configuration. Next up, please. Okay, so what we're about to see here, and we're getting close to uh, the point where we're gonna start getting hands on with this, um, is important things that you had to look within attack underscore uh, uh, attack range configuration. So the administrator password, as you can see, is pretty standard. Remember the comment I said, you, 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 you should, uh, change those passwords to something that you remember and it is not easy guessable. Uh, otherwise, I promise you, if you leave these things overnight, they'll probably be accessed um, and probably compromised. Remember, when we use infrastructure code, one of the premises of infrastructure as code is, is ephemeral. It means it doesn't stay there. It's, it gets used for what it needs to be used and it gets destroyed. That's it. This, these are not instances that are meant to stay there. Unless, of course, you want to keep them, but because it's flexible and it's scalable, you 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 don't want to um, you want to use them for when you need to use them. I understand it takes 10, 15 minutes, but if you save your configurations and once you get acquainted with how to use it, uh, you can build it. Uh, anytime you want. So uh, some of the things that you had to look is, for example, the window settings is the username will be administrator. The password is, is, is specified there. It tells you where to download the uh, the applications. For example, you can see clearly what is downloading the Splunk forwarder. It tells you, for example, uh, the Win Sysmon template. Uh, like I said before, we're using the the, the uh, template for Sysmon configuration, which is one of the um, tightest and highest on, on auditing and obviously producing verbosity on locks. And that's, that's, uh, that's, that gets done for you. You don't have to do, I remember when I used to, I used to have to download an ISO, then I had to apply this again over and over and over. It is tiring. In this case, you just had to configure where, even locally, you just had to configure what instances you want. Uh, it will download in, it will build in, and it will be ready to go. And uh, one more thing, as you can see here at the bottom, if you wanted to stop, for example, enterprise security, uh, zero is not, one is yes. So let's move on to the next one. So here's, uh, um, before we get onto this, this is why, why you tell the software what you want. So for example, I want a phantom server, I need to place one in it. I want a domain controller, by default there will be a one. If you don't want it, you place zero. If you want a Windows server, you place one or zero if you want it or not. 
Kali machine, the same thing. So, so remember, you gotta go to attack underscore rage dot com, and that is where you modify the environment that you want to build. So if you if you do not modify this uh, by default, you will get a domain controller and a Splunk server. That's pretty much what you will get. You will not get the Kali or the Phantom. Um, so these are things that you had to look at before you execute. Next up. So let's talk a little bit of adversarial simulation before we go into our hands-on exercises. Um, uh, the reason, again, we did this was basically to get um, ground truth about replication of attacks. And, and in this case, we have selected two frameworks. And one um, is Caldera, obviously developed by MITRE, which MITRE is the leading company uh, in uh, TTP nomenclature. Uh, MITRE is the creator of attack uh, framework creator of a uh, uh, holder of the CVE database and many other uh, um, uh, information security uh, tool techniques and procedures nomenclature. So um, what we want to do is basically use this industry accepted framework uh, nomenclature replicated operationally in actions. And these actions are usually attributed to an specific adversary right so what we want to do is conceptually is apply this replicate this attacks into a sample host now the sample host and this is something that i mentioned when we started this presentation should be a golden image what is a golden image a golden image is a an iso or what can be a container depending on the on the on the bottom end you are a virtual machine that or even a, 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 a bare metal uh, if you have to uh, that represents your infosec policy posture and hardened procedures so for example if i am in a company and uh, i want to make sure that when i test this this uh, attacks um, they give the results give me a, a true a real uh, information on how my um, enterprise how my company will be affected if this attack was performed i had to do this on an a golden image so in order to create a golden image um, most likely you're gonna have to go to your uh it department or secops department it depends upon your organization and you're gonna you're gonna have to ask and all most of you who work who have worked on an enterprise or work on an enterprise you know that when you're deliver an asset being a laptop being a workstation or being a server there is a configuration there is an inventory there's a number of tools that are placed in it uh that were purchased maintained and managed by your organization so if you want to make this truly truly closer to what what the real thing will be you want to do this on a golden image next up and obviously the reason why you want to do this uh, is because it will represent your attack surface it will test your attack telemetry it will test your incident response rules it will validate your defense rules. Many times you can you can apply your own defense procedures into these environments and see how well you're doing, including, for example, um, if you're looking at uh, how to prevent escalation of privileges, uh, do you have the right GPOs in place in order to prevent this? Outrange cannot give you that because Outrange basically gives you the benchmark where to apply these defense procedures where to apply these defense measures that apply only to your organization so this is important for you to understand that that it's almost like we're giving you the dough you had to make the you had to make the bread you had to work on this uh and the 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 more detailed the more customized you make it according to your own organization the much better for you in order to um, um gauge uh, the the um, resilience of your organization. 
So um, in some cases, for example, this also may help for, for I have had some analysts that uh, have, uh, there are certain environments, for example, that you cannot pen test or that you cannot use uh, a specific attacks. Uh, in this type of uh, um, environments, this type of tools uh, come in handy because yeah, you cannot attack them, but you could simulate the closest you can. So this is a great tool for blue teamers. Next up. And then right before we go into the hands-on stuff, uh, it is important for us to disclose to you that uh, adversary simulation does not prevent zero days. We remember, we're replicating stuff that's already published. Um, we are replicating stuff that um, is, is available. Uh, this, however, if you get, for example, an exploit for an exploit DB that you can download, for example, or you can opt the Metasploit via Kali, you can test right away something that's been published. Uh, and you can also do exploit development as well. If you had that sort of capability, that sort of knowledge or skills in your environment, uh, this does not replace uh, pen testing or bug bounty or red teaming. It's, it's an additional tool that you can use, uh, and it would definitely, if I want, in my years of, of, of blue teaming, uh, this is this is this was um, uh, very important because if you don't have the resources, you cannot have a pen test. You don't have the skills. Uh, this will give you a little bit of a uh, visibility of what will happen. And of course, remember this. Many times, if you turn off your EDR or AV, um, you know that this this is an accuracy uh, a question of accuracy. How accurate this is? Uh, because many times, because I'm sure many of you heard the the word um, golden image and say, "Well, my golden image has Cloud Strike or it has Stadium or it has." Uh, carbon black. Okay. Well, sometimes you may have to turn this off in order to see the extent of damage. So this this is something that actually questioned the the adversarial replication tools. Uh, and again, this tools partially depict sophisticated adversary actions. So this is not the entire picture. This is simply an additional tool. So next up. Okay. So. Included adversary simulation engines. We have Codera, Codera developed by MITRE, uh, and we'll we'll see in a minute uh, how to use Codera. Codera has a uh, an agent. Uh, this agent is installed at the host, and then you have to choose a number of uh, profiles to execute, and then you get results. Uh, next up, and we included Atomic Red Team. Atomic Red Team has what we call the Atomics. The Atomics are uh, basically replication heavily, heavily uh, uh, endpoint based uh, TTPs, uh, which is uh, are based on the, are actually categorized within MITRE attack framework. So if you if you for example are within an organization uh, that will tell you, hey, I need you to give me a um, uh, a report how we would do if the following techniques are performed against us. Uh, this is a great reference. This is a, uh, a pretty easy uh, uh, to test and to uh, um, record and analyze. Next up. So here's, uh, I was mentioning that, the uh, the MITRE attack framework keeps expanding and expanding. Obviously, we, we can't possibly think that we can uh, include the entire universe of attacks. And once, I always tell people that once a, a, a an attack has been recorded, categorized, and named, it likely would not be repeated by the same the same actor. Because obviously, what would you what would you do that you will get caught? But that's uh, that doesn't mean we cannot learn from uh, these techniques. That doesn't mean we cannot have an idea of what they have tried to do uh, and be prepared for it. So next up. All right. So here's what we're gonna we're gonna give you a, a a run on the actually how to build it, run it. We're we're gonna show uh, for to basically handhold it um, how to do how you operate it, and then we're gonna go into the real deal. So um, what we want to show now is you're gonna build it. You're gonna we're gonna perform an attack simulation. We're gonna search it. We're going to destroy it. Um, 
or you can stop it or resume it. So let's go ahead and next. So here's the commands. I'm gonna pause for a second. These are the commands, the basic commands that you need. Uh, you can always, and Jose will probably, uh, will go uh, over it in a, in a minute. You always obviously remember, you, you clone it, you, you build the, uh, the virtual environment of Python 3 if, if applicable, you execute it, get your libraries, get your binaries, modify your attack conf, um, use the mode Terraform a cloud or use Vagrant if local. And then basically what you're gonna do is execute the attack underscore rage the pi. And that you have to tell it, okay, if I'm using a local, then the mode or dash M will be Vagrant. If I'm using the cloud, the mode will be Terraform. Right, so the first command that you're seeing there is how to build it. The second command, and this is uh, also very important because usually, you know, um, uh, it's exciting to build all this, but it's also important to test it. You had to do the, the sequence, the appropriate sequence, which is basically you had to tell it, okay, what mode am I using? Am I using the cloud or am I using local? And then action dash A, what am I doing? Am I building it? Am I destroying it? Or am I simulating? So in this case, if I'm performing a simulation with dash A, simulate, and then SD, which is the simulation technique, and it will give you, then you can place the, remember when we were looking at, at, at the um, MITRE attack matrix, uh, you can actually pick up numbers from there, not all of them, there isn't a, there's, there's a specific number of atomics, they don't reproduce the entire gamut of uh, the micro attack, but a lot of them. I have to say the coverage is uh, pretty good for, uh, for, for to get you started. And then finally, you need to tell the attacker, the, the target, sorry, that the target will show once you finish building, and I will show you that in a second, once you finish building the attack rage environment, there will be a printout that tells you the name of the machine and the IP address, so you're ready to interact with it. Um, Jose, I'm not sure if you want to uh, chime on this one or. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, uh, uh, so I, I, I noted this in Discord, but the the goal is at the end of this, I'll, I'll, I'll walk uh, everyone through building one from scratch on mm -hmm. an environment. And. Uh, it looks like we uh, had another um, issue with. Uh, We'll confess, but that's fine. I can I can pick it up with it. Don't worry about it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna walk you through this, and we're gonna make sure that um, um, uh, we cover the the what you need to know in order to build it from the scratch um, and operate on it. Uh, let's see. So the other two things that that, that are important. Uh, what we gave Jose some time to come back is. Uh, um, you want to uh, destroy it if you are, and I'm telling you this. This is this is uh, if this is a Terraform, for example. If you're in a company and you know you're in a tight budget, and you know it, it, it may cost a little bit if you leave a domain controller, a uh, Windows server, a client machine, a Windows client for a month or so. Uh, they may, you know, may cost a lot of money. So uh, you want to destroy it, and in order to destroy it. You had to go into uh, uh, you had to execute Python attack underscore range the uh, pi and hold on it looks like he's you can you hear me Jose yeah I'm back sorry about that okay cool cool okay so I was actually going through the uh, the process of destroying it and how it is important to understand it that when you are in the cloud. And because there also one of the things that you can modify, by the way, is where are you downloading this ISOs from? So as long as these things are static, you can go, you can always rebuild them anytime you want. And I there's one thing also that as a researcher I can tell you, there might be issues with licensing depending on what you are loading to the cloud, and also. Um, uh, I know it's not easy at times. Uh, usually when you are doing uh, exploitation research, you you may want to 
um, work with vulnerable machines that, and there are a lot of scanners and there are uh, mitigation, um, uh, I guess, technologies in place that uh, may not allow you to do that. You may want to do that locally. Um, not sure if you want to uh, chime in now, Jose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so again, probably want to end up building these things uh, uh, lo locally if you're if you're only testing specific, like like one specific attack. Um, and, and to Rod's point, if, if also uh, when you when you built this on on uh, AWS, what the attack is just gonna end up doing is it, it's gonna it's gonna attach the way the way it knows what it builds itself. It's gonna attach uh, uh, like uh, uh, its name, like attack attack range something, and and your vagrant key, right? So the name of the instance, but also vague, uh, your sorry, your SSH key, your vagrant key, your SSH key is what what it filters by when when it lists what servers are available, and also when you go destroy because it's using Terraform in the hood, it's gonna have a really good, it's it's gonna know what state um, your environment is built under, so it knows exactly what to destroy afterwards. Um, and essentially, when you, again, when you do the story, you basically cleans out everything. Um, when the range is building on Terraform, it's building on a, on its own VPC, so it doesn't really, it will never conflict with whatever you have running also on your account. It makes it really, really easy to run. Like, um, again, if you're, if you're running some other application, I mean, this is your own personal AWS, or you're using even your company's AWS account, um, you don't have to create an account to run the range. It's, it's going to run everything its own unique, separate VPC with its own subnets, its own uh, a route gateway, so on and so forth. Which is pretty convenient because that that if you're new to, to uh, cloud environment, this is a uh, it can be a pain to configure all this. It would take you some time to get there. In all honesty, um, let's move on, please. Okay, so this is what I what I had uh, uh, mentioned before. This is what you would see, and now we're we're finally entering on the walkthrough before. We get on the on the hands on, and we'll give you the SSH keys, and you go away uh, and play with it. So, what you see below is the command that I used to build it, and what you see on top is the last printout. The last printout basically says you have this EC2. Obviously, we're using Amazon EC2, um, and this is what you have. In this case, I configure a Kali. I configure a Splunk server, which is where Caldera is, by the way, um, on board 8888, and then I configure a uh, Windows domain controller. If you look on the right, you'll see the status, and you most importantly, you you see the IP address, because at one point you may want to access these things, right? Um, so uh, next, please. Here's a simulation. Remember what I told you about the target machines that uh, you had the name. Remember, remember the last screenshot I showed you because those are the names of your machines. Unless you decide to change them, uh, those are the names of your machines. So when you when you look at that printout, you may have to make a mental note of the IP addresses and the names. So when you perform the simulation, you will know the target. That you're performing it against. So, as we said before, um, in the in the actual um, um, following the wiki, uh, you basically had to uh, execute attack attack underscore range the pi. In this case, the mode is Terraform. The action is to simulate, and the target in this case is the domain controller. And then the simulation technique is. Uh, T10103, which is uh, credential dumping. Also, uh, you can also, if in case, because what happens sometimes when you're doing all these attacks, you get you get this very large printouts. If you do Python uh, space attack underscore range dot pi uh, space dash lm, will give you all the list of machines again. So we'll list the, num the, the IP addresses and the, the name of the machines. So as you can see in this printout, um, we have been able to successfully execute uh, T1003, and uh, it tells you what host. You can see it uh, uh, below. It tells you, uh, yeah, I executed an atomic red team, uh, and that is the actual result. Next up. 
And now the nice part of, of this, uh, which is we have, where the, our team uh, uh, has done an amazing job building uh, dashboards. So basically it will tell you exactly uh, what simulations have you run, what type of techniques have you run, and then uh, you can uh, delve into this. You can actually look at the interests that I previously mentioned and actually found the data from the attacks that you executed. So what we're looking at right there is a, a standard dashboard that you're gonna get once you build the attack branch. Remember, it's Splunk, um, the Splunk where, uh, where the your downloader is free. You don't have to pay for any of this. Um, and you have uh, included with it, uh, you have ASX, you have Stream, you have Security Essentials, you have ES Content Updates, the attack range reporting, which is what we're looking at, and of course, the search and reporting. Not sure if uh, Jose wants to talk a little bit about ASX, but uh, um, this is what you'll be looking at once you start executing uh, attacks. Next up. There. As, it's now that we have executed at the command line base, the atomic, now, we can take a look. What you're looking at here is a table that is under the dashboard that you just saw. So in this table, you have the atomic test that was performed. As you can see, uh, it was a PowerShell Mimikatz and GSEC DOM. On the right side of it is the host name. Remember that we built a domain controller, right? So we're putting all together now the MITER ID which is uh, T1003, is we knew it was credential dumping. It tells you exactly where we got this from. It tells you the, it tells you the tactic, credential access, uh, the technique, and then the test name. So that way you have a reference, okay, this is, these are the things I had tested. Uh, so we go from A, execute the attack, to uh, B, which is, okay, what I executed, what is it recorded, and, and we can delve even more. Uh, next up. We can even look. Remember remember the, the indexes I mentioned at one point? Look at this. Well, you can go in the index and it will tell you what the technique, the technique was the, that was executed. And the event tells you the time that it was executed, the host that it was executed, uh, the, the, the specific attack that was done, and the number of times that it was done. So this is for an analyst. If you're if you're trying to produce a report, or how are we doing against the, the let's say you try to choose a column within the uh, attack matrix uh, uh, for MITRE, uh, this makes it way easier. Next up. All right. So we're gonna go back to Splunk in a little bit in a little bit, but I wanted to show you a little bit also of the frameworks that we included. You already saw the attack uh, atomic rec team that uh, it's by default included in it. But we also have by default Caldera. Caldera is obviously uh, developed by MITRE. They are the original creators of uh, this nomenclature, along obviously with a consensus in the industry. But, but basically, this is what we are following nowadays. And uh, I wanted to give you a little uh, um, view of uh, how to use Caldera. When you install the environment, automatically um, the, the, there will be a Caldera agent at the host that you choose to build. So what I'm showing you there is a, um, an agent. Look how it tells you what the host is, right? This is the host when the wind dash DC. Remember, we specify all this before we built it. So this is important. This is why we decided to go uh, from A to Z, showing you step by step. And you can you can have your C2 connection via HTTP or TCP. In this case, this is a TCP. Um, it tells you what type of privilege the agent is running at. This is important if you're doing tests, obviously. Uh, and the PID, uh, the process ID. Next up. So now that I have my agent, 
running. Remember, you cannot run Cholera if you don't have an agent at the host. You have, you need to have an agent at the host. Sometimes I refer to this uh, uh, um, attack simulation frameworks. That they remind me of old school banking Trojans, like a uh, Spy Eye or SUS or or uh, Andorad, stuff like that. It's, it's basically you have a C2 panel and then you have an agent and then you execute actions on it. So in this case, we're doing this in a in a much more, uh, um, I guess, uh, defensive focus way. So, so in this case, for you to, to basically apply this, first, I repeat, you had to have a agent at the host that you decided to build when you modify attack underscore rage.com. And then once you log in into Colera, uh, which is uh, the same IP address of this Splunk server, but the port, instead of being 8,000, that's the port for Splunk, 8,000, the port for uh, Caldera is 8888. So once you are logged in and you check out that your agent is working, if the agent is not working, you will see, the, you will see it in red, the PID will show in red. So that means you may probably have to um, reinstall the agent or deploy another agent and the, and the way to do that is basically if, if 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 you look at the menu basically it will give you code and you're going to have to access directly your host so if we were to access directly our host we'll have to rdp in one of the uh, ip addresses that you saw uh, in the printout so you you may, you are going to need an rdp client uh it's, it's a full-blown machine, by the way, a full-blown Windows machine, you can access it, you can show whatever you want in it, uh, and you will have to basically execute their uh, code in order to redeploy the actual agent. So once I have my agent working, now I want an adversary profile. This adversarial profiles will tell me, hmm, uh, what is it that I'm looking for? Collection, discovery, enumerate. Um, they have several um, applicable profiles of actions of uh, abilities, they call it abilities, that you can execute on the host once you have a running agent. Uh, and this is the, the, uh, an example of it. Next up. In this case, I decided to use the discovery profile. And what you're about to see here is basically me executing a, um, a discovery profile of actions on a Windows host. This Windows host, as you know, is the Win-DC. And then I name my test. So once you execute it, as you can see on the right, it, it goes by time and it tells you exactly what it's using. You can see uh, what things have been uh, on green, uh, have been uh, identified, for example, identify local users, identify active user. So the green ones are the things that was able to be do were able to be achieved and the other ones uh, are, were not, right? Um, so in the top part, uh, you have the uh, percentage of the entire simulation. So it tells you, okay, these are the actions that I'm performing and this is uh, the uh, how long I had to go in order to complete it to see it in a certain way. So uh, next up. And then, this is this is a little bit of a extra work, but you can do this as well. Once you, um, if we can go back for a second to the last uh, slide, please. If you look uh, onto the left menu, at one point, once you finish, uh, and depending on the settings that you have, you you can download the report. The report, uh, uh, you see the, there's a green icon there. And once you download the report, the report will be a, a CSV file. So now we can move on to the next slide. And as we see the next slide, what I did is basically uploaded the report. We're trying to find ways to automate this. We had to have some hiccups with uh, some of the releases from, from, from Caldera. They, sometimes the code changes and it's, it, we're still trying to figure out uh, uh, pinpointing what the, uh, the specifically what the, the report is stored. Look, it's a story in memory. We're not able to pull it, uh, but uh, we're working on it. So that way we automatically import this report. And all what I did is that you download it, you go to settings, add data, you source type this CSV, and then I basically 
uh, Splunk will parse it, and from there I created a table. And then in this table, you can see uh, it tells you what the privileges are. If you look at the left, this is elevated or this user. It tells you the platform. It tells you the host. It tells you what was done. It tells you the adult detected. It tells you uh, the ability name. So basically, we have a full report of what happened. And it tells you, uh, look, if you look to the right, you can see a display name. You see win-dc and the authority system. So we can't more, we can't, guys, we can't get more granular than this. This, this is pretty much showing you what happened and uh, what went from A to C, from the, the creation of the environment, replication of the attack, recording of what happened. So next up. And of course, for those who like to uh, play with exploitation, you can always call it. So I put this for the sake of it. I put this so you guys can see. This is what you see here is me exploiting a uh, the Windows Server using Metasploit. But of course, the, this opens the doors because once you have Kali, you can do whatever you want. You can you can install, uh, you can download, you can use. For example, uh, I'm not sure if some of you guys remember uh, there was a a um, a recent Windows uh, uh, privilege escalation. Uh, exploit that had to do with uh, a print process and you had to install the new version of Empire. You can do all that here. You can do all that here and then you can record it at the at the, at the, at the Splunk level will be recorded because it's audited already by a Sysmon. So there are many things, the, the, the possibilities for you are, are quite a bit extensive because now you have the freedom to test all this. You don't have to do this. Uh, um, uh, if you're in an, in an enterprise where you, there are so many uh, uh, constraints about what you can do, what you cannot do, this is done on a private VPC in the cloud. Um, the tools are there already. You don't have to take hours and hours configuring, downloading stuff. So this is the, the wonder of this tool. And now we can replicate attacks, build exploitation, test new uh malware, ransomware, whatever you want. So so I wanted to show you all the possibilities uh, that uh, you can do with this tool. Also, and we're not touching really on this um, today, but um, you can actually add Phantom, and with Phantom, you can actually add responses to these attacks. That, that will be something that we will present uh, in the future. And I think with this, we're ready to go. Let's see what's next. Oh, uh, this, uh, I think this is my, uh, um, basically a slide where, uh, what I just executed, by the way, uh, you can see, uh, I named what I created the, uh, the payload. When I created the payload for Metasploit, I basically named it attack range dot exe. And, uh, this, the, uh, there is the, uh, the data that, that comes via syslog. I did this on purpose, obviously. Uh, to to show a proof of concept that how even if you're not just replicating adversarial simulation techniques and you are doing your own attacks, you can still find the data at the uh, name host. Uh, and with that, I think we are uh, lap time. So Jose, take it away. Hey, thank you, thank you, Rod. Yeah. So so so. Yeah, let's uh, let's start playing with this thing. Um, I'm sure I'm sure everybody's excited to just uh, get their hands on it. Um, really quickly, I just have three three quick slides. Um, so we have some free build lab environments, and and then I'm also going to build one live here, and you can follow along and building it on your own. If you're going to follow along, um, you're going to need an AWS account. If you don't have one, go build one while you're listening to the last three slides if you can. <laughs> I'm sorry, go sign up for all. But uh, at a really high level, the lab that we will will be providing you or will be building um, is essentially we're going to be first uh, building up an instance of I'm calling because I'm not creative with names here the attack range controller. That's what we're actually going to use to build our range and control it. Um, you can obviously do this on your local machine if you're doing it on your own. But for the sake of the lab, I, I just want everybody to jump on one machine that has everything out of the box for them going. Um, so you'll be accessing into this controller, and then from this controller, you can launch attacks to the Windows domain controller instance that's already built. Um, or again, you can be built in these if you're following along. 
Um, you can also SSH into Kali Linux. Uh, again, I'll give the credentials out in, uh, uh, in a second. And you can also reach via RDP. As uh, Rod mentioned earlier, you can get, grab the RDP client uh, for Mac if you're using uh, Mac OS, or you can just use the Windows uh, remote desktop, the, the uh, remote desktop client as well. Um, for Linux, I think uh, uh, RTPC works uh, uh, or RTPX, I don't remember. But um, yeah, just grab your, 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 your favorite. Are you, uh, are you gonna provide a list um, and assign it to each person that's in uh, as an attendee or how are you gonna handle the access? My my request was uh, just have uh, whomever wants to have the pre-built instance going to DM me and then I'll, I'll assign them a team. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Make sure you guys and, do and that. In, yeah, make sure you do I'll that slide. in Discord, guys. Yes, yes. DM me in Discord. I have a slide on this, the Discord instructions and, and my username in a second. So you don't get lost there. But Joseph, great point. Thank you. Um, so yeah, this is a high level environment. Uh, you can reach Splunk on HTTP 8000. Um, not listed here, you can reach Caldera on the same uh, IP, but on port 8888. Um, so on the ranges that I'll be providing in a minute, uh, here's what's done for you. We installed the OS dependencies. We've already configured Terraform. We've already pre-configured the attack range.com file, and we've already built a range. Uh, if you can always destroy and rebuild, if you wanted to see what the process looks like, but just FYI, this is already done for you. Um, again, how to get started, Discord channel, DM me at diff. Uh, I'll be handing off credentials in the next uh, in the next few minutes. Um, and again, once you get those credentials, the first step is you, you uh, you'll be able to SSH into the domain controller. Uh, you can log log into Splunk, uh, check out the results. Again, I'll give you credentials for all these NIPs for for your respective team, and and run detections off of uh, Splunk to, uh, uh, enterprise security content updates. You can play with more complex attacks, et cetera, et cetera. So right now. Go to Discord, message me. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this video right here so I can start providing credentials back out, and then uh, and then in two minutes I'm gonna start building a range from scratch if you're following along. Okay, so all right, five minutes, everybody there gets, gets sounds started. awesome. Thank you. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you, Jules. Yeah, no problem. So we got um, 62 people in as attendees. So attendees head over to Discord. Um, make sure you message, make sure you DM, direct message. So do it in Chan, um, D1V, and uh, he will get you uh, an instance set up. So full disclosure, there's about, uh, we're we're going to try to cap about 10 individuals per uh, shared environment, uh, per, per, per lab that we're, we're heading out here. So uh, just FYI. The dragon cell here, uh, I, I must share off uh, with you. I realize that copy and pasting from Google Sheets is, doesn't pretty print things in, in Discord. <laughs> So I'll give you both a, a, a screenshot and the text file because who likes to copy and paste from screenshots?
All right, I have DM ranges to most of uh, our credentials to those of you who have messaged me. Um, the rest who are following along, I will let me get my uh, my terminal here ready so we can start building one from scratch. Um, again, we're we're assuming that that you're already starting with a in a WS account. If you don't have one, uh, please go create one. Um, we'll get started in just one more minute here. Jose, are you going to start from the scratch or, or are you going to show the uh, built up environment? I'm going to start from scratch, Rod. I'm going to build, okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to build uh, the controller and everything from scratch. Um, that's yeah. great. You should go over the attack the the conf thing, uh, attack underscore range conf, and so they can see it. And absolutely, good point. Good point. And I, again, I, I'm also going to be on on the Slack here. Oh, hold on. I'm still getting DMs for for labs, so bear with me. I uh, you know what I I am I have to send out the the SSH keys as well to all those who are requesting labs. So let me give you those right now. I realize that I'm I'm giving you a picture of the <laughs> of the actual uh, of the actual uh, domain the, the actual IPs, but not the the SSH key. Yeah, happy happy fun time. Sorry, thank you, thank you. I'll I'll paste the password right now. Yeah, I, uh, I know they're they're kind of annoying to copy and paste from or, or copy from an image. Right? There we go.
All right. I think we're. Uh, I think most of uh, most of everyone I replied back to the uh, of DMing. <clears throat> you should have a range. Um, let's get started a building whomever's following along to building our own. So let me start sharing my Firefox again here. Um, you should be seeing a uh, AWS uh, console. Uh, can anybody, uh, Rod, can you scream at me? Yeah, me know if yeah. I can see it. It's, it's not full screen, but. Uh, yeah, a little better. Want, yeah, that's much better. There you go. Sweet. Okay, so <clears throat> first thing we're going to do here is we're going to build our controller. Again, if you remember from, from uh, the presentation here, we're going to build this giant purple box first, and then we'll get the range started on this controller. Um, for the most part, I, uh, I, I'm I using Ubuntu 18.04 images, but any Linux image should work just fine uh, here. So I'm going to go with uh, the Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. And uh, again, because all of this machine is going to do is just allow us to install a command line interface and run commands in it. We really don't need a whole lot of horsepower in it. Um, the free tier T2 micro should be just fine. Uh, so let's proceed with this one. Um, actually, so uh, really what we want to do here is on the security group, uh, again, make sure you restrict this to your IP address. Uh, I will leave it open for, for the sake of, uh, of the example here. Um, uh, but just, again, just make sure you, you, you restrict this to your own environment. Um, I'm going to destroy this right after this example. So I don't really mind too much, but if you're going to keep this around for a bit, you, you want to restrict that out um storage doesn't really matter uh you know again we're going to be installing a cli here so it'll be eight gigs the, the standard works just fine i'm going to call this um uh, then i'm going to give it a name of uh attack range controller six uh because we already have some uh, we have five pre-built labs so this is going to be my six uh and again set 2422 perfect open to the world the way i can share this if anybody else uh, dms us later uh, and asking for another environment and launch now here's the part where uh, uh again it starts getting not necessarily tricky but just make sure i'm, I'm going to create a key pair for this uh and this is the same key pair we're going to use for the range so just fyi um and i'm going to call this key pair attack range range team six Again, whomever is the lucky, the lucky one who joins uh, uh, and asks for another DM for another environment, I'll just I'll give him these keys. So got a new set of keys here. Boom. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and download the key pair and then launch the instance. Now, while this instance is coming up, I am going to grab the public IP. Let me switch over to my terminal. Can everyone see my terminal? Yeah. Sweet. So you think you're up for confirming. Um, I'm, for the sake of argument, I'm just I'm, I'm putting all of my keys on this jungle folder for, uh, so I'm, I downloaded the key earlier that, uh, that we just grabbed from, we just generated from MakeWS, attack range team six dot pen. So put it here and I'm gonna start SSHing into this instance. So I'll pass it the key. Go and username Ubuntu, and then the IP address. I, uh, it's going to be the IP address of the, pu the the public IP address of the machine, which I thought I copied, but let me make sure. So this is the machine that the controller we just spun up. There right. we go. Oh, I forgot to change permissions on my SSH key. Let me just fix that. It, it needs to be read only, otherwise SSH won't want to use it. All right. So now we got a very clean brand new ubuntu machine uh first thing we want to do here uh again this is going to be the, the the machine we install the attack wrench on we're going to just run a, an update a minute let's grab the latest packages and then the next thing we want to do is start installing some os dependencies a lot of this again gets covered by that uh, ubuntu uh installation script 
specifically, we're going to go ahead and install, we need Python 3 dev. We need the header files from that. We need Python 3. I'm just going to uh, bring it on zip. We're going to need pip, Python pip. We're going to need the AWS CLI and the Python virtual environment. There you go. It's going to take a minute since uh, those Python headers are not small. I think this whole thing is about three, four, 300 megs total of packages we're bringing down. If you have any questions as you're following along, uh, I'm in Discord uh, on the track 1H. Just ask away. I haven't checked in a few minutes, so I'll, I'll, while this is going, I'm going to go ahead and check it. Uh, cactus, uh, yes. No, wait, Cactus, I did, uh, I did get you the SSH keys, I hope. Pretty sure I did. Let me just double check. Oh, Steph, welcome. Um, Steph, give me two seconds. Let me just give him a set of credentials. We'll continue. Two seconds here. Also, it gives everybody a little bit of time to catch up if, if you haven't spun up the server, SSH in, and install the packages. Go for it now. Okay. So let's keep going. So once we have our our prerequisites installed, let's go grab uh, our prerequisite uh, OS dependencies installed. Let's go grab Terraform. So I literally just w get the Terraform uh, binary right from them. And the reason we installed unzip is just to unzip this little file here. Uh, there's probably hundred better ways to do this, by the way. And this is very easy to script out, like like I shared on the wiki. But again, for the sake of a uh, of the workshop, I'm doing everything manually. <clears throat> so I'll just move Terraform onto user local bin so everybody can use it. Obviously, we can't write to this unless it's that little root. And then we're pretty much ready here to uh, start our uh, setup of attack range. We got all the OS stuff out of the way, so we're going to get clone on attack range right from GitHub. Uh, and then I see, I'm see uh, I'm currently on. Uh, on the attack range project. The next thing we're going to do is again, we're going to go to Terraform and let's just uh, Terraform in it. All of these we basically started the configuration at this point of uh, Terraform uh, since we got the whole OS of prerequisites out the way. So if you're following along, if you want to follow a wiki page, that's the wiki page to follow the, the uh, Terraform configuration wiki page. So we're going to go ahead and Terraform in it. Like I mentioned earlier, this, uh, what we mentioned earlier, this goes ahead and downloads the different plugins that we're going to be using under the hood for Terraform to build the environment. And that's done. Next here is uh, let's create a virtual environment so we can install our, the project dependencies. So to create a virtual environment, you just virtual env. That's the Python version you want to run. Uh, this is one of my favorite things, honestly, um, for Python that you can you can separate whatever is happening on your project away from your OS. If you ever had the experience of ruining your OS as Python, like I've had in the past in Debian, that's something that you may never come back from. <laughs> um, so this is this is a good practice. Um, so I just created a virtual environment called VM. I'm going to go ahead now and activate it, which means that now I am, actually, if I do which Python, you can see what's going to happen here. My pip, oh, sorry, which pip? Pip is right now pointing to user bin, which is my system's pip. But the moment that I activate this environment, if I can type, and I do which pip, now pip is the pip that we installed in that environment. So now I can do this fancy thing here, pip install requirements, which actually uh, it's it's all the actual libraries that AttackRange depends on for Python. So like things like Ansible, which is what we're using, is what we're using to orchestrate uh, the builds under the hood, and a bunch of stuff. This this is gonna take a minute. So let it run there.
again, this, this has a bunch, a bunch of uh, Python dependencies. So we're all done. We, all of our dependencies have been installed. Now, the next steps, uh, again, I'm just doing this for quality of life. I'm gonna change my host name on this machine. I'm gonna call it the attack range controller sys. And then the next thing we need to do, which this machine doesn't have right now, is the SSH keys. The SSH keys that we downloaded earlier from AWS. And this machine is gonna need it because on this machine we're gonna, when Ansible is running, it's gonna actually SSH in and start building the environment. It's gonna split my terminal here and go to the just to make sure I can look at it. Uh, of course, I'm going to display my private key here for the world. Obviously, this private key is going to live about the life of this event, so I don't mind. Uh, here we go. So I copied my key over. Um, uh, again, SSH does not like keys that are readable by the world. I'm going to make it just readable to my user is uh, chmod by changing this permission. And the next step here is uh, AWS configure. And we need to configure AWS so we can actually operate uh, Terraform. Uh, and it's asking me for a key ID. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and flip back to my browser and create a, a key on AWS. Da, 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 da. Give me one second. Let me share Firefox again. So everybody should be seeing my Firefox now. So <clears throat> I am going to create a key, uh, 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 an API key, so we can actually build the range of Terraform. So I'll go to uh, IAM, Identity Management. And, and here's a little bit of a tricky part. Uh, we don't have, today, we don't have necessarily a good set of policies to to assign for AWS, the, the range uses a lot of components under the hood for AWS. So I hate to say this, but just give it admin rights for now. Uh, this is something we definitely want to post eventually on on the wiki, where we we get very specific as to what roles you're providing uh, your AWS user. But for now, just go full blown admin to avoid any potential issues. I'm gonna call this attack range team six. Uh, this user. Again, a programmatic access. We're looking for the access key and secret. And and I already have a pre built a group, just with like full admin rights, just administrative access is the attached policy. Um, as long as I think it has AC2 admin, it should be okay. Um, doesn't need a name. I just need credentials. Created a user. Life is good. I have a key. I have a, uh, a user key here. Sweet. So this is what I'm going to paste over. It needs the secret. I'm going to paste the secret over as well. Uh, my region, in this case, I'm building on US East 2. Um, one, uh, one big thing of importance is make sure whatever region you set, one, you, again, you created your SSH key under that region uh, earlier back. I should have uh, pointed that out, but we're, we, we're working on US East 2. Um, and then also when you configure attack control, you see it in a second when I jump into the configuration file, you want to set your your region in there very explicitly, otherwise you're going to get errors. Right? So the the AWS configured uh, region needs to match the attack range configured region, as well as the region your key is in. So now that we are uh, we configured AWS, all we're missing is just configuring the attack range, and and we'll we'll spend a minute here. I I kind of want to walk through I want to walk through this config. So one thing first things first. Um, the uh, key name. Oh, I just realized I've been in Firefox this entire time. I'm so sorry. Let me go back here. Um, yeah, so so just going back here for a second. Uh, I basically copied and pasted uh, SSH over, and then I ran AWS configured. If you haven't seen it, to configure uh, region. So next up here is attackrange.conf, uh, and here we'll, first, the name of the key here needs to match the key that we created in AWS, so attackrange6, uh, if, again, it's, I'm just going to flip really quickly back to AWS here, if we go to the EC2 
service and we go to uh key pairs you see that there is an attack range team six key and this name specifically needs to match the name that we provided over here um the whitelist again highly highly recommend if you're building this on your own you restrict it to your own ip um attack ranges get attack <laughs> build them up actually by uh, bots or third parties um and also make sure we'll do this in a second but make sure you change the passwords i know that this already landed in some more list and like i said uh, like ram mentioned earlier um you if you leave your range up and you don't change your ip address your your your, your whitelist here and your and your default password you're probably going to lend your range to some bitcoin miner or somebody's going to essentially use it for something else here we already got we already got some instances of uh uh, AWS sending us uh, messages that our stuff was accessed. So remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sharing this out of experience. Not <laughs> don't make the same mistakes I did. <laughs> Basically, right, right. <laughs> um, so again, I changed up the region to point to US East, uh, just like where my keys are and where I configured AWS at. And I'm going to generate a quick password here. Uh, give me one second. And then, uh, not sure, this is one of the reasons I love VIN, little, little neat VIN click. Uh, percentage S allows you to run regex, uh, like said, find and replace. So I'm going to find and replace every instance of the word attack. I like attack range, which is the password we use by default, with a bang at the end, with this generated random password that I just got, um, and boom. I went through the entire file and changed the like the attack range. So the default password is no more. Let me just grab this one and set it aside. Uh, and then continuing here, our, uh, our configuration. So we configured the region. Um, I, I've already saved the SSH key under this file. Uh, if you recall earlier, I, this is the file I ended up editing. You can obviously put the SSH key in any other location you, you want, right? Like, like let's say you want to use you have under uh, the private key path, you, some other key, because you're using this server that you're building up for something else, you can always pass it another path, right? Um, just FYI. Um, and I'm not gonna change, the, <laughs> even though I said it like 10 times to change it, I'm not gonna change it just because, uh, again, we've been sharing this range just for everybody to, to play on. So so, so I, I wanna keep it open just for the sake of this lab. Um, following, continuing here on the configuration of the range or the config file, um, Again, I said I replace all the default passwords, so the spawn password change and all the other ones. But um, the cool thing about the range is it allows you to configure all kinds of stuff, like you know, what's the, what Splunk version you want to install. Um, we grab all the apps instead of from Splunk base. We grab them ground from an S3 bucket. Um, but Splunk base doesn't have an API today, so so this makes it really easy to just grab apps and and also freeze the version that we're using. Um, but if you wanted to, you know, roll your own app into Splunk, you can set your own S3 bucket and put the app in it as long as you you pass the right name uh in here. A uh, question, Jose, are we are we leaving the binaries for everybody? Are we uh, leaving the, the uh, this bucket is open to the world. So okay. yes, Rod, that, that was sorry, I'm not sure if I that was the question. Well meaning meaning uh you know if they want to the binaries for example for for uh, for uh, the ISOs and stuff like that, because I know things changed that pretty quick. Um, the, there was a gentleman asking a question about Caldera. We had had to uh, do some adjustments because of, as the versions change, um, uh, it affects our configuration. So that, that my question is, we're, we're trying to to provide stability on, on on the on the lab itself, so we're leaving them there. Am I correct? Yes, that's correct. And and actually, to to further that point, we we uh we fork Atomic Red Team. We're not using Atomic Red Team uh, uh, as it is on on the project life. Uh, we keep a fork just for stability purposes, as you mentioned. And and same thing with uh, Caldera. Uh, I believe we fork Caldera as well. Um, and again, this is to avoid like any potential upstream changes breaking the attack range build process. Um, we typically update any fork we have uh, on a monthly cadence 
sometimes that happens to be two months, uh, but we usually try to avoid, you know, slipping more than two months uh, away from whatever the project's uh, uh, head is. And and again, for the for the Splunk apps, we we just keep a copy of them on this open S3 bucket. Um, it, again, you, all of these are completely free and available off the Splunk base uh, 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 marketplace, but they again they, they don't offer an API, so it's just much easier to just go to grab them off of a bucket. A um, few more little notes here. If uh, if you heard before about the bots data set and and some other cool work that the uh, specialists do, uh, security specialists at Splunk do, um, you you can have the bots data set pre built, which means this is a uh, a set of a, a data set that already comes with like pre built uh, uh, attack scenarios that you can install on the range of the Splunk server as it comes up automatically. If you wanted to test with data that's already there and available, good explanation on the right on the readme. Um, again, Phantom server pretty straightforward. Uh, it's it's going to need uh, the Phantom community using and password if, if uh, to install other apps and to grab to grab Phantom since Phantom I think it is paid for but there's a free version for it. Um, you still need to log into the community app. Uh, and then Windows uh, again we're also passing the Windows forwarder URL here right you can change whatever uh, forwarder you want to whatever version of forwarder you want to use for 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 Splunk and and Sysmon. Another thing that we're doing with Sysmon, and this is again something that just uh, completely bit us as well, was um, right now we're, we're we're installing Sysmon right from our from our S3 bucket, but that's um, again because we had a situation where uh, version of 11 of Sysmon had a bug. Um, we were downloading it right from Microsoft. Microsoft doesn't provide uh, version or the previous version of Sysmon, and so you're only only always pulling from the latest. And this broke the attack range for about two days. Um, so right now we're just kind of freezing. Uh, I think we're on version 1.0, sorry, 11.01. Um, they just released 0 0.02 recently. So we're about one minor release behind on Sysmon. Um, again, if you want to just download it right into your bucket, this, this, you can just point right, right to your bucket here. You don't have to use ours. You don't have to trust us. Okay. Um, uh, and, and then the Sysmon, uh, the Sysmon configuration for Taylor Swift. Um, you just pass the file here. I'll show in a second where this file is coming from. It's not very obvious, but um, we have some pre-built configs for six months already, like the um, Forward Arms Roth uh, server and workstation config, uh, Taylor Swift, and also uh, Olaf's hard times uh, um, as well. If you want to play with enterprise security, something that you can just turn on. This does require this does require Enterprise security downloaded and installed under the apps folder on this project. Um, again, enterprise security is paid for. Uh, it's Splunk SIM. And it does change the way you reach Splunk uh, to use HTTPS instead of HTTP by default. Um, and when you pass it, whatever you put in the folder, make sure the file name matches the file name here. Um, this setting allows you to install the, the Splunk uh, machine learning toolkit. Uh, again, flip one zero if you want to do some machine learning stuff. Uh, this allows you to configure uh, 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 Splunk's data stream processing. So if you wanted to send data out of a DSP, I, uh, I'm gonna jump through this. There's a lot of features in here, but I, I'm just gonna, I wanna, uh, for the sake of time, I wanna focus on the, the main, main stuff, which is here, the environment configuration. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Sorry, uh, the environment. Uh, da -da -da. So, so in the environment configuration, you can uh sorry i jumped around and so again you can set up phantom server if you want to build one um if you wanted to build by default you can build the domain controller a windows server or a kali machine in this case i want to build a kali machine so i'm going to go ahead and oh. i'm going to just set this to one uh as well and then everything else here is like if you want to shake the uh, uh private uh, the private IPs when they come up, or I, I wouldn't recommend you to play too much with this uh, unless you really know what you're doing. But it's all kinds of settings, so like parameters, like you know what what uh, what is version of uh, hey, my image you want to use if you want the clients to join the domain. Um, again, the cloud attack range uh, environment is set up there as well. It, it's usable. We just don't have any uh, simulation engines for it out of the box. But that's the config file. Um, again, the parameters we ended up changing were. The key, just going really quickly, let me go back up. The, the, the key name 
and the region in this case, and then the default password. Let me, let's, let's get building. So I mentioned earlier, building takes about 15 minutes. Uh, so we likely won't finish the entire building, but I, I am gonna jump into another environment just to show you attack simulation and how that looks. So mode Terraform, because that's what we're prepping for, action build. And there we go. It throws a message about Vagrant not being there because we never installed it. We're not building this for Vagrant, but let's see if I did everything right, this should just start going. Yep, it looks like at least Terraform was able to start working. So it, it's now creating all the different pieces in AWS for this range. If we right, so like the VPC, the subnets, the route tables, uh, Go. The main controller just, I think the machine's trying to come. If I flip over to Firefox, you're gonna see this stuff come up here. Let me, let me, let me show you what this looks like on there, under AWS. I'm just gonna filter by our key name, which is attack range, range team six. And I should be getting machines going. So this is terribly wrong. It takes a little bit. Yeah. It takes a little bit. <laughs> Let's see here. You know, I must have done something wrong because I don't see the, I don't see the um, the machines coming up. They may be coming up in another region. You're you're in Ohio. You're in Ohio. Are you? Do you select like the east west east? If you select no, the US east. east two. Okay. Yeah, US East two. I'm just going to get a minute. It's only around for a minute. So it may not even be. Let's give it a minute. Unless I, unless I didn't save. But here, let's, let's just give it a minute. While this is going, I want to show, uh, again, for the sake of time, I'm going to jump into another range. Well, uh, uh, this guy's building. I, I mean, again, you can run this on your local machine if, if you're interested, or just let's try and rebuild the current range uh, we shared. You'll see the process, but it does a lot of cool stuff. Like, um, again, it, it created the instances in this case. Uh, it's it's here. You see it trying to connect to the instances. Actually, I think that's the error. Uh, no, there. It's trying to connect to the different instances. Then it runs Ansible to provision it, and then it goes ahead and starts. Like in this case, it's building the the main controller. We're still looking at the uh, Amazon. You have to switch to the uh, CLI. Oh, sorry. Bad habit. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, you'll, you'll see here again, it's gonna do all the AWS stuff, and bring up the box and try to connect to it. And uh, you see here trying to connect, this is waiting for the machine to actually come up. And then it'll SSH into the machine and, or, or uh... yes, yes, I, I can actually. Let me see, is that a little better? Text wise? Um, there we go. So it's, 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 it's coming up. You see, uh, that's like disable Windows Defender. We disable Windows Defender because sometimes when you're emulating certain stuff, it, you know, you, you don't want, uh, your like, uh, input protection to get in the way. Um, but ours, you can go in there and turn it on. Yourself. That's actually but, smaller if you want to make it a little bigger. It's actually smaller. So I. Uh, the one that you had before was better. Was better? Okay, that's right there. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, that's I am. I am. Um, all right. So let's, let's, well, this, this range is building here. Why don't we go and, uh, uh, Launch an attack against Warner, and then we'll figure out where this one landed. I must have made a mistake. I don't know why it's. I'm not seeing it. 
uh, me too propaganda time, but this is got rid of my two monitors a while. So, so I have another range, uh, I have another full range running under a uh, under another controller. Uh, so I'm just going to SSH into it. This has already been built. Let me just grab the IP address for it, and we can jump right into it. So controller one, um, I'm going to CD in this case to the attack range directory. Again, I'm going to activate. Uh, I'm going to activate my environment uh, that we have under the dependency. So, which Python should be my if my environment is Python, and if I run the attack range here, mode terraform, we're going to, and then I'm going to run the, uh, list machine flag. So LM means list machines. Um, this is the flag that actually prints out what's running for you. So you'll see in a second in this other terminal when, when this finishes up, uh, that we get the same print out. By the way, let me make this uh, a little bit bigger since uh, I know that ideally hasn't been perfectly, like, uh, yeah, the letters were not necessarily perfectly uh, well seen. But uh, go back to this machine. So the, the one thing I wanted to share here, let's let's try to launch an attack and 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 see what that looks like. But before we launch the attack, let me browse to the Splunk server and just verify that everything is running. It's it's it sh there shouldn't be have be any attacks in it yet. Uh, so let's let's again let's flip back to Firefox and do that. Uh, so HTTP or eight thousand. That's the IP from the server that I just copied and pasted. And in this case, it's admin. And let me, let me grab the password for, for this range. One second here. Okay, right, got the password in there. I usually copy the password somewhere once I put it in the config, because then you forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so by default, uh, 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 Raj showed us this earlier, um, but you see like this nice like uh, um, boot up launcher where like how many simulations was ran and so on and so forth. Um, if I go to the search and reporting for Splunk here, uh, we'll see there's already a bunch of events been indexed because this range has been running for like two or three days now. And and you see in the, on the source types, really we have Windows event logs, we have network logs from streams like DNS, uh, and 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 some of this is Sysmon, and specifically there's an index that we ship with the range called attack, and that index is what actually has the different attacks. It's now completely empty, so that's what I would expect. So let's let's flip back and start hammering hammering this range. So Python attack range, uh, mode Terraform. And then in this case, action simulate, right? We're not we're not building in this case, we're simulating. And then we're gonna pass it the simulation technique. I'm being lazy in this case, I'm not gonna take the whole thing, but uh that's a shorthand for it, ST. And the simulation technique in this case, let's let's launch just from the demo credential dumping. And and uh again, just for clarity, what's happening under the hood in a second, I'll I'll, I'll show you once the attack runs, but this uh, reference comes from the MITRE technique, but specifically the, the, the MITRE technique, e.g., uh, that, that belongs to an atomic, an atomic red team. Um, and I'll show, again, I'll share in a second where this, this specifically comes from, so you can see what simulation techniques are available out of the box in the range. But let's try credential dumping. This is going to run, I think, about 17 different ways that credential dumping happens. Um, and then we're going to give it a target. Uh, our target machine in this case is the domain controller. If I can copy correct, <laughs> there we go. Target, boom. So, so here we go. It's gonna it's gonna start launching the attack, and just give it a few seconds. Hoping it works. Could, we could have demo fail, such as life. I did not, did not give my offering to the demo guys this morning. So, 
underdog machine died at some point. That is also possible. Since usually you get like some connection screen right afterwards. Well, this is going, let me let me double check what our process like what our progress is so far on the other range we've been building. All right. So this is still building the Windows server. Um, again, the, the, the Lumen controller, it's about nine minutes in. Good finish. Like I mentioned, usually it'll take more than 15 for the whole thing. Uh, okay. I might have had a demo fail here. You know what? Let me try to RDP or First, let me make sure this is still running. <laughs> let me try to RDP into this instance. It may be that I just have to uh, bump it. Give me one second. I'm just open remote desktop. Like Rob mentioned earlier, these machines are, uh, this distances are full blown machines. There's nothing, um, th 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 there's no, no difference between a full blown machine and this. Uh, but it's, it's running, it's, I mean, it's, it's running a full DC2 Windows Server. Finally, it got connected. Never mind. I'll just wait a second. That took quite some time, usually pretty fast. There you go. So, first thing, uh, it's going to go ahead and install like a, a, a Tommy Red team if it's not installed on the box, the agent. And and then once it's installed, it like, does some like minor configurations and oh, some, something went wrong. Been seeing this where like when arm sometimes will crash. Let me let me restart that instance, uh, specifically this uh, Windows domain controller. Uh, this range specific has been running for a few days, so I suspect something must have gone wrong with that instance. So let's just find it here in Firefox. Do, 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 do. Uh, specifically this instance. Oh no, that's the error. Just grab the right instance here. Oh. I am in the wrong account. Bear with me. Let me, and I don't want to destroy it and rebuild it because we're going to be another 10 minutes here waiting for this to destroy and rebuild. Two minutes. I'm logging into uh, the WS account for this instance, so I can go ahead and uh, I'm gonna just hard reboot that instance. That, that Microsoft Windows instance. During the meantime, let's just keep checking the status on our our other range build. It's getting close to being almost done. Go. All right. I just to show you, I uh, this is the main controls. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot them, and hopefully, you know. When in doubt, just reboot three times. <laughs> I should probably RDP into it, but I just for sake of time, I'm not even going to go and troubleshoot it. I'm just going to reboot it. If it doesn't come up, we'll just wait for this guy to finish. And we'll use this as an example for attacking. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for this range to finish building, worst case scenario. But let's see. Um, well, that, uh, that's coming up. Uh, here, let me just do a list machine. Let's try to um, RDP. Make sure again the server comes up and it works well. There we go. Machine looks like it's back up. I'm going to go ahead and copy the password for it. Shh. 
should be seeing now this uh, Windows kind of login screen. Rod, can you confirm for me? Yeah, I, I, I see the login screen. You're already being, right? Yeah, I am. Uh, just to, again, just yeah, to make sure. It is, it is, yeah, it is. It has to create a profile if you're logging for the first time. And then it should be the splash. There you go. You are, you're in. Sweet. Yeah, there, and I was complaining about the unplanned shutdown. Yeah, yeah, it was unplanned. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so, uh, okay, so let's see if this actually took care of a little hang up earlier. Uh, I'm going to flip back to, I'm going to flip back to my terminal. Here we go. All right, so let's try to launch this attack one more time. There you go. I think this time we're going to have luck, I hope. Yeah, it went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It usually, again, it's usually pretty instant. Uh, you know what? I, what I've seen happen, I think uh, when RM dies, uh, it's the way. Oh, never oh, mind. It fell again. It seems right. to have an eight, when RM is section uh, credentials. Uh, Let me see something. I thought this the case. But here, we have a what? I made a mistake in the SSH key. It did complete SSH authentication failed on this guy. No public key. And authenticate my SSH keys. Yep. And it is. It is on, we don't, yes, it is. Okay. And who is the server? In one second, let me just verify this server. Oh, one, one nice thing is when things fail uh, at times, when you run Terraform, you may not have to rebuild from scratch. Uh, it's not necessarily a requirement, which is pretty cool. The Terraform would know, like, just to rebuild that instance that went bad. So I'm checking this instance really quickly just to see uh, which is the one that I failed to log into. I think I must, you know, <clears throat> did I, did I change the... Oh, you know what? That's the problem. I, I, I got it on the wrong region. Excuse me. I thought I'd save this file. I must, I must have edited it and not saved it. Okay, let me, let me just make sure I'm in the right. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Right, how are we doing on time? I, I just want to make sure we're not cutting into another percentage time. Nope, you have plenty of time. Yeah, we're past time, but we'll, we'll stay as long as we, you know, as, as they're comfortable with. No, you guys have, uh, yeah, you guys have it until you, until you're done. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is good. This is part of the process. <laughs> yep, you're not, gonna, you're not learning if you're not breaking something or ha running into problems. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I made a mistake here. I never saved the config file, and and I got so excited and I ran my build, right? Oh, without uh, it, so, without yeah. the SSH key. Well, without the key or without the actual region, which is why I was never seeing oh, in AWS the, the, the server wrong IP building. addresses. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. I mean, it's just, this is. Yeah. Make people might people might do the same thing. Now they're learning from that. So here we are. I am going to uh, again just run through the steps of what I configured earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and change my passwords. I'm going to put my Kali machine in here, boom, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and just remove the. Um, let me do a destroy before I do this. Before I do another build. Goes ahead and destroys whatever is there now.
Uh, you know what? Let me just wipe out the telephone stick. I'm just rebuilding the whole terraform thing right now. <laughs> it looks like I broke it pretty bad. Uh, here we go. And we should be able to do another build. This time around, hopefully we're in the right region. Let me log into AWS again and see this thing come up again. Flip here, my So attack range team six. Oh, there you go. Now we're seeing the actual machines come up. That's why I was weirded out. I'm like, hey, why is it, where do I see the machines? Right, so now it's actually creating them. All right, let's just give it another whirl. While this is going, I'm going to go ahead and destroy destroy the other instance that we left uh, dangling around in US West. Give me two seconds, just so I can do some cleanup. Uh, and then let me, again, just double check here the, the build process, make sure that's, that's looking OK. All right, and also let me double check Discord. Can't help anybody. There is no dangling questions so far. All right, so this is coming back up. This is good. This range, I, I don't know what ended up happening here with uh, the team one, so the controller one. Uh, we can do a destroy and rebuild too. Why not? How does that sound? Have two ranges for the lack of one. Who doesn't like to multitask? <laughs> destroy, by the way, is pretty straightforward. You see here, um, like an action destroy, and it's going to literally undo everything it did on your AWS account. Straight route tables, the VPC, the route gateway association, the actual server for Splunk, Kali, so on and so forth. It's literally nuking the environment from orbit. And sorry, I just flipped back to the build. This is already building Kali. Nice. So it's building Kali, it's building the Splunk search head and the Windows Server. So things look like they're progressing okay. Just flipping back here. If uh, if, I, if I look at US East 2 and I look at the attack range, T6. Yeah, things are running, they're initializing. This is this is looking decent. All right. Back to term. All right, so all this this is building attack range six. Let's let's look at how my destruction of one is going. All right, so this is done. Destroy 34 resources. I'm gonna rebuild attack range one. Uh, again. Two is probably better than one. But actually, before we build it, I, uh, I, something I didn't talk about a little bit earlier is uh, 
the help file here, the, the CLI help file and the different commands really that it takes in. Um, we kind of talked a lot about this in the beginning of the presentation, but they are two, uh, there's really two main modes uh, we would expect everybody to use, right? Vagrant and Terraform, that's the flag you see me continue to pass, right? Minus M. Um, and there's really only two required flags, mode and action. And the mode is again, Vagrant if you're doing things locally, Terraform if you're doing things uh, uh, using AWS. We highly, highly recommend anything that, you know, you're going to share with teams and stuff like that is going to be used in Terraform. Um, unless you're doing some dev work, Vagrant. Um, we typically don't use Packer uh, unless you're doing something consistently. Um, like we're thinking about deprecating Packer in the future. Just FYI, we're, again, we added this as an optimization, but uh, Terraform has gotten so fast right now, we could do it in 15 minutes. It used to be 30. <laughs> that, that now Packer is becoming less and less of a need. Uh, on the action side, again, there's a few actions you can run on this thing. You can build it, you can destroy it, you can run simulations, stop and zoom it. Um, I, we really didn't cover a whole lot. There's other options like uh, search, test, uh, build AMIs and destroy AMIs. Um, build AMIs and destroy AMIs is very specific to Packer. Um, we're introducing the ability to run uh, almost uh, the attack range as a, uh, again, as a part of a CI pipeline. So you can pass it like a unit test. And what what that would do is you, you can bring it up, or the type of, uh, when you pass it a test file, or, or bring it up and then reading from a test file, it launches a specific environment, um, or builds a specific environment, then launches a specific set of attacks against it that you, you declare in the test file <clears throat> against the set of targets you declare. And then it checks for whether the detections uh, that you specified on the test file caught that attack or not. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature that I'm I'm super excited about uh, finishing off and, and sharing with everyone. It's it's how we plan to do automated testing of our detections. Um, on the on uh, the other flag, another major flag again is when you're running simulations or simulate. Uh, you you gotta pass the target, otherwise it won't work. And you saw me do that a little earlier. The simulation technique is the technique from uh, Atomic Red Team, which actually I forgot. Uh, to share where that's coming from because we had that error, but I'll come back to it. Uh, I haven't totally locked. I haven't hasn't totally locked my mind. Um, I'm not even going to cover search name. Uh, we're, we're thinking about deprecating search name and the search feature for in lieu of test. Um, if you had another config file somewhere else, you can pass it. You know, again, the path in here. Uh, the test file is for the test feature, and then the other flags you saw is a list machine earlier, which actually prints out everything that's been built out for what the current status is, and then list searches. Um, again, the AMI is for the Packer feature, which also will likely get deprecated. This is spending a nice cleanup. Let me flip back here. Okay, this is still building. So let, let me, while this is building, uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and start building also the team one's attack range. If you're following along and you have your own attack range and you're playing with this, if you're just training and building, again, any questions, comments, jump in Slack, message uh, message um, uh, Dave or Trahan. Uh, we're both in there. Um, while team one and team two builds out, uh, let, let me talk about how the atomic red team uh, technique flag works a little bit. Um, so when you when you pass it a a flag like T like a sorry a simulation to me like T one zero zero one, what's really happening under the hood is it's gonna go ahead um, and actually sorry T zero zero three it's gonna go ahead and 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 leverage one of these uh, atomics and this is coming right from the Red Canaries uh, uh, GitHub uh, project uh, Atomic Red Team. And if we open, for example, um, and by the way, uh, now Atomic Red Team is, is uh, uh, supports sub sub techniques. If you're familiar familiar with the uh, MITRE sub techniques, which is pretty neat. Um, but if we open T003 here, um, they have two files. The YAML is the actual configuration that runs, uh, and then a read, a markdown file. The markdown file uh, walks you through the different kinds of um, simulations that are really happening or attacks basically are really happening when you pass this technique. So when when we specify T003, it's really running these two attacks, so these two atomics, so they call it uh, PowerShell Mimikatz and GSEC dump, right? And if you click on PowerShell Mimikatz, you see a nice description of what that means or what that does. Um, the actual command that is uh, invoking on the system. Um, and, and again, uh, uh, they're usually pretty like, extremely well documented as to what is it trying to accomplish with quote unquote that attack. Um, like Rod said, 
uh, earlier, and I think it was also mentioned in Discord, the fact that a family team is launching a sample of an attack doesn't mean that this is what all the invocations of that this attack looks like. So this is, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, table stakes, or table stakes for, for like the most basic of detections. Um, this is definitely not a deep and uh, wide uh, view of what kind of potential attacks can happen, for example, like in using GSTEC Um That's where other more complex simulation engines really take hold, like again, uh, Red Canary or um, Excite or uh, Attack IQ. Um, I'm going to click here on another simulation technique. For example, this is one of the sub techniques of uh, 002 as part of a uh, of credential dumping, and this is specific credential dumping for the security account manager, um, which includes uh, dumping registries using reg.exe, dumping registry using, again, secrets at dump, or PW dump X. And, and there's a really, again, really good examples and, and documentation as to how this works. Um, I'll be using this to demo simulation in one second, and I'll demo detection as well. Let me jump back to the terminal, make sure that build is going okay. All right, so it looks like we're about nine minutes, we're about four minutes left, roughly, on, on this build. And this is still going. This is still building the machines out. All right, let's, let's just wait, let's wait it out. Any questions so far? I, uh, um, I'm gonna jump over here to Discord and make sure that I uh clear anybody away who has any open questions. There, there's one open about an agent uh from Caldera. Um I'm building up a a range myself when um because we've been having that issue for some time where the HTTP uh, connect back works for a minute. It shows like it's working in the interface, but then it dies. So the way around that is usually um, you go in Caldera, look at the, the code, uh, RDP into the Windows, uh, paste it in um, the command line, and then it connects back. So I'm gonna replicate it and, 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 and post the screenshots on the, uh, on the actual, um, uh, uh discord i'm just waiting for the the range to finish it should be finished soon okay. rod are you, are you, it'd be awesome if you can walk me through here too i you know i don't think of a rant yeah I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at, yeah I'll, I'll i'll i can actually show it let me uh let me get in and 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 uh, i'll do it because i had to deal with this when i was building the the wiki so it, uh, it started happening it started happening like you know like any vendor they push new um new code and then certain things don't work the same way anymore so uh um uh we that's when we decided to fork uh one of the versions of caldera uh patrick and i were, were talking about it but um let me uh once i get it and I log in um i will i would i will show i will, I will show it here Thank you, man. You wanna you wanna go over the uh, the dashboard or show the dashboard where the it shows the the actual um, results from the execution. I yeah yeah as soon as uh, I'm, I'm gonna wait until I have two ranges uh, two builds going now. I'm gonna wait. I, most likely this is gonna finish any minute now. There I think it's doing the the last like uh, portion of the install, which is set small on the the main controller. And then I'm gonna launch the attack and I show the dashboards and I show the attack uh, results in there. And then maybe we can we can do if you don't mind, Rod, like walking through this Caldera issue, we can show everyone like, hey, this, this is how you run it and uh, run into it and how you resolve it if if you do at home. Yeah, let me uh, let me get onto this uh, this um, the Caldera server. Give me a second. I was curious. I uh, da, da. actually I ha have another range. I can show the dashboard. And wonder how how's uh, everybody else's environment is doing. Hope you have better luck than I did with my uh, my team one environment. <laughs>
we go, come on, come on, faster, faster, faster. I have zero patience for, for waiting for this thing to finish, which is the result of the Packer mode. And uh, and I a lot of the wait time is, is not necessarily, it's, it's just things when Windows machine takes a long time in AWS. Oh, there you go. Team 6 is built again, um, successfully this time, which is great. All right, so so let's get a Splunk really quickly. Again, just make sure that it came up and we can we can see it. Thirty thousand and username is admin. Let me copy and paste the password that we had said earlier. There you go. Zero attacks so far, great. Um, and again, just running through this again, I always make sure that data's coming in. So we, we got a little bit of uh, data in there. Uh, let's launch an attack. So let me flip back to the terminal. So action simulate, simulate, simulation technique. Let's do T00, I mentioned earlier 02, which is the credential dumping for us from the security account manager. Uh, sub technique and then uh, the target is going to be our domain controller. So we'll pass the domain controller name. And let's see. And then after after this one works, let's view the uh, hopefully when this works, let's view the, the results and then we can jump into Caldera and do something Caldera. So again, it, it checks whether if Atom Everything installed, it's gonna go ahead and install it if it's not. And then run the actual attack. There you go, ran the technique correctly, it's cleaning up. And so we successfully executed technique zero, uh, T00302 against the target. Let's flip back to Splunk and we should see that that uh, our, our launcher page now, we should see an actual attack in here. Or not, just kidding. <laughs> it takes about a minute for the data to come and get indexed. You know what? Uh, let's just search the index directly. So if you go to index attack, see the last 15 minutes. Hmm, interesting. It makes, let's see if I find logs for this. Should be seen. Am I in the right server? 227, 249. Yep. Oh, you know what I think I'm at? Is it two zeros in the simulation technique? Let me see here. I always forget. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Oops. <laughs> let's try. Let's try this again. I messed up the, the simulation technique ID. It's two zeros. Two, right? Or three digits. Right. I seem to have worked again. Let's go back to Splunk and refresh this. Oh, now it got me an error, so this is progress. Yeah, if we go to index attack range. Oh, there you go. Okay, perfect. So you can see, uh, again, we write all the attacks into this index. Um, and we can see here the we launched uh, uh, two tests, test one and two. Uh, specifically, the registry dump of SAM, creds, and secrets, and registry parts with pi, pi, cats. And if we flip over to Atomic Red Team, on this technique, that's exactly the two way right? registry dump of some creds and secrets and registry parts with PyPyCats. Now, 
if you wanted to see what this uh, detection search looks like for, for this technique, uh, we have one in, uh, in our uh, enterprise security content update. This is, for lack of a better word, the bread we make for Splunk, uh, our detections for these attacks. Um, and we have specifically uh, uh, a use case here for credential dumping that uh, has a bunch of detections. Uh, and I know there I have one specifically for that uh, technique of registry dumping through the reg.exe. I just got to find it. Here it is. So this is the search. Um, I think this should work out of the box, but I may have to modify it slightly. But this is looking, oh, there you go. It worked. Perfect. Yeah, so this search is looking for any process commands with reg.exe or command.exe that has the keyword safe under any of these registry keys, uh, HK local machine security or HK local machine SAM or HK local machine system. Um, and you see here, there are a few instances where the uh, command C, uh, CMD or reg.exe actually uh, uh, ran uh, what looks like a tent uh, dumps, right? And again, this is the Tommy Red team doing it. So this detection works. Awesome, <laughs> as we would expect it. So we launched an attack. Uh, you you saw what that attack looked like, and, and this is the detection uh, for that attack. Now let's uh, let's look at Caldera. Let's look at Caldera, the uh, simulation engine. Uh, and support A. I send that over with the instructions from whomever is uh, running on their own range. Um, because I, again, I uh, replaced all the passwords with my own password. I'm just going to use that password in here. And Caldera came up. All right, I got, I got it. Um, if you, if you want, I, I can guide you through. I can show where the pencil. Uh, let me know what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Please guide me. So I'm, I'm here on the agent. Okay. There's right. So as you can see there, the PID uh, is showing that the agents are are dead. Right. So click what it says. Click here to deploy agent on the left. And then select uh, click on it. Yep. I don't see the menu yet coming down. You have to click on the white. Yeah. On the arrow uh, here. I think it's not showing because it's sharing. Interesting. Well, let me uh, I, I look at mine and I can tell you exactly what you need to click on. So you and choose A and you're going to select man X. How about now? Can you can you see? I think it's something to do with it the way it's sharing. Can you see? No, okay? I, can, I still can see it, but I can select man X, which is reverse show. OK. Via TCP. Yeah, I, uh, reverse your agent TCP communication. Okay. Right now, scroll down uh -huh. until you see the Windows icon and see TCP. You see that? Okay. It's a reverse so show reverse via TCP. TCP. Yeah. So go ahead and copy copy all that code. Okay. All of it. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to RDP into the Windows server. Oh, okay. Give me two seconds. Let me let me yeah. bring up RDP. Uh, so I'm going to share RDP here. Uh -huh. Let me find the let me find my Windows Server IP address. Two seconds. I'm going to go ahead and add a new PC. And then using an administrator and then the password. Yeah, the password. password. Right. Give me two seconds. Password. All right. Continue. So once you log in, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. Windows is just logging in. I'm not sure if you're seeing that or you're still. I'm seeing not that. seeing it. Yeah, you may have to change the uh, the the actual um, screen. Yeah, let's let me see. try it here. Yeah. How about now? There we go. So, so do this. Go what it says. Um, uh, Windows key. The type run or do right click run. Um, right click key. on it. It's just double fingers. There you go. Type notepad. Enter. You should see notepad coming on. Paste the code. 
Let me let me go grab it again. Sorry. Right. Seconds. Uh, so the Windows show. Right. For for those who are asking, you you have to select the code that is to the operating system we're trying to get to. So in this case, it's Windows. Now you want to go to the beginning of the string, and then you're gonna change the IP address where it says zero 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 to ten right. dot zero the one dot twelve. And then and on the next the one, of, uh, yeah, that's the default Splunk server Caldera. You see what it is? You see? Well, hold on, hold on. We're not done yet. Uh, in that one as well, ten to zero, the one to twelve. Now do edit, select all. Okay. Copy. Now go back, go to uh, Windows, uh, the Windows um, menu. And then do right click run CMD. or yeah, CMD. And now once it opens, type PowerShell, PowerShell and hit enter. Excellent. Paste it. Enter. And now go to your caldera. Two seconds. I'm just, I'm just going back. I don't know, but yeah, we're kind of going around this. Uh, go to your Caldera and now go to Agents. Okay. Refresh. Ta -da. There it is. Yeah. Got a live agent. That yeah. answers questions. Thank you, Rod. Of course, man. So then, so now, so then I should be. Right. Yeah. You Okay. Do you know how to do the operation, right? You go, we had to go to adversaries. And then on adversaries, we're going to select a profile. And we're going to save this profile. So do an easy one that, or you can do several so they can see it because as you select different profiles, you will see the operations or the abilities like uh, Caldera, uh, Mitre says that you can do. So you should, we can do one that the discovery is usually pretty nice to get started. So you select in the profile discovery and, and uh, you can enter that profile description and save it. Any okay, so I'll pick sorry, discovery. So if you see uh, in the in the actual discovery, those abilities uh, will, will tell you things such as it's gonna try to view admin shares, it's gonna try to find if it's a domain controller, it's gonna try to find if it is an, an uh, anti-virus program. Now notice that there are icons, and these icons tell you if this is applicable for the operating system. In the in the target that hosts we're, we're running our um where we're running our agent right so let's say discovery and now we'll go to campaigns and what we want to do now okay. save yeah. it uh-huh and i'll go to go. campaigns uh, here we go operations, operations huh? yeah okay so now select an operations discovery or uh, hmm, it's not you can here. click view. No, you should be able to see it. Uh, okay. Oh, operation name test. Uh -huh. And then click on basic options. And then so you can see, for example, the groups, you can divide groups of uh, agents, for example. You can select profiles like we looked at. So click on the profile, for example. Discovery. Yeah, it's there. You go. Uh, you can you can tell it keep open forever, or there are other options, and then you can do run immediately. And once you hit start, watch it. It shows up on the right, and it will show you the progress and what's happening. Like right now, it's trying to identify the active user, right? See four percent. You see how it changed. So this is how you do your operations, basically. All right, 8%. Yeah, you know what it is, it is working on, yeah. Is there anything? So this is running, Rod, all these discovery exercises, basically, huh? Right, based on the profile you selected, there are others. There is a worm-like behavior, there is actually, um, uh, uh, I believe there might be a, a specific um, adversarial uh, emulation, um, but um, interestingly, interestingly enough, 
Uh, it's not like the atomic where you get the, the, the identify technique. Uh, that surprised right. me a little bit. I was expecting to see a menu with the techniques and then go for it, but it's not. I'm sure they will put it at some point. So now that that um, that we finish, uh, this is what I did at the end of my presentation, which basically uh, you notice that you weren't able to view admin shares. So that failed, right? So we, we can actually look at index uh, and the index a win index, and you will see the execution of the uh, of the agent, which you can find by basically going back into the agent and looking at the name of it, and then searching it with an index equal win, and you will see what the what what has been doing basically. Yeah, I'm go ahead and do that really quickly. Since I'm already here. Yeah, you can go. You can search. Do you remember the name the name of the agent? If you go. Right. I don't think that's a complete name, but you you can always go back to the agents and I'll I'll try to rock it. Uh yeah. Yeah. this is I know it starts with that. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Go. There it is. You see that? So, 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 so now you have the you have the you have the, the full Magilla. You go from the building to the execution, to uh, the we're finding it, gives you process ID, gives you the the executable. So this this is a, a an amazing tool for researchers. I love this. I it's I, I always wish I had something like this. It took a lot of time in the industry to to get to this point, and obviously we didn't have the uh, technologies we have nowadays. So Rod, the, the agent in this case is uh, the host name. Is that is that what it matches on the field? I'm trying to no, find. No, no, the agent should be under an executable. Oh, it's a creating script block of text. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing it on the under... part, so Maybe maybe if I don't specify an index, then I wonder if this shows up anywhere else. This should show somewhere else too. Uh, you yeah. should see in the index there. There you go. Know? Yeah. So it's showing up in the Sysmon events uh, through partial execution bypass and then some command. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, and guys, we're we're dealing with this as you are. Um, you can see the operation is still going, uh, and some things will apply, some others would not. Uh, again, I want to emphasize this: when you do this, you want to use your golden image. Your golden image is your um, uh, ISO, your bare metal workstation, uh, your uh, inventory approved of white listing, black listing uh, applications uh, that you're going to run against this test um, in order for you to know, oh, if we were attacked by this, then this is what would happen. Right. So always remember that if you if you don't use a golden image, you are not getting a representative result of what happened within your environment. If you're a blue teamer, for example, if you're a researcher and you're not looking at this as a perspective of defense, but it's a different focus. You you look at this mostly from uh, from the uh, writing a signature uh, or uh, like we're doing a Splunk, um, do some SPL. The kung fu and and and, and finding uh, uh, maliciousness, creating tables of dashboards. So great. I uh, I'm gonna end it here if it's okay, Rod. Um, I, yeah. I think I think we covered quite a bit. Um, I uh, I am actually kind of happy and thankful that things didn't work exactly how we expected because everybody got a good taste of like what troubleshooting the attack range looks like also. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this, this should give you a really good experience to like, how, you know, how do you build things? How do you launch an attack? How is it pieced together? Um, again, we're, 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 we're going to be around in discord. If, if you're still playing with this thing, the goal is to destroy all the provider labs, uh, by first thing tomorrow morning. So they will be around for a little while. So again, if you want to keep, uh, uh, kicking around inside of them, uh, and, and yeah, again, Rod and I will be in Discord. Otherwise, you can find us on Twitter. Uh, this this was fun. Yeah, this thank you guys. Hmm? Yeah, I, I was gonna say thank you, Joseph, and uh, uh, you know, the, the 
Texas Cyber Summit uh, team. I, you guys have done an amazing job putting this event together. Yeah. And we really appreciate the opportunity. No, thank you guys. I mean, you're, you provided a lot of resources for the attendees to be able to learn. Um, we're not charging for this. You're not charging for this. So this is all about taking care of the community. Yeah, you guys can reach out to us anytime and uh, expect more from, from this tool. We're going to be delivering more. Um, and there will be other stuff that we'll be adding to the attack range. Hopefully, uh, with this tool, you will be able now to create your own signatures and you'll be able to share them with everybody. Same thing with new research and new exploitation. So I wish you good luck and uh, success using this tool. Thank you, Rod and Jose. Um, you guys have a great uh, rest of your Sunday. Thank you. Thanks. That's right.